Welcome to HeroQuest fans. Tonight is a special episode. Unfortunately, we are not doing the rant cast. Instead, I'm going to be your host here on HeroQuest fans. Shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio for the great music. And also to Lo-Fi Geek Haunted House Lo-Fi on YouTube. And we're just going to turn that off for the moment. You can see my wonderful setup here. I didn't quite get the same black light that I had in years past, so it's I just kind of rigged something up here at the last minute. That's my sprue that I'm still working on for Space Crusade. Uh, using the Warhammer Fire Team, Cheers Dead Gamer. Got some grape soda, and I got some uh, no plugs or sponsorships here, but um, it's pumpkin spice Halloween nog, eggnog. Let's see what it tastes like. Hmm, it's good. I'd say it's not nearly as good as the Christmas uh, eggnog, but it's tasty. Definitely got a lot of calories and a lot of sugar in it. Anyway, so yeah, uh, tonight, yes, those are Necrons. Yeah, um, Warhammer Fire Team, it just came with a bunch of um, Space Marines and a bunch of Necrons. I mean, sprues that you're supposed to put together yourself. The Necrons are gray and the Space Marines are blue, but I, since it was after Christmas, everything was on a discount, so I bought a bunch of them. And I was just spray painting the sprues different colors, testing them out. So this is the glow in the dark one, which glow in the dark minis are so cool. The problem is you're not going to play in the dark, so it's just a little thing to impress your friends. And then there's these uh, these are like chrome silver, but I mean they just look purple. And these are kind of like glittery gold. And I've got some of these alien sprues which I'm going to use as the soul suckers or the gene stealers. It's like color shifting. But anyway, this is a black light. So welcome, Bohemius. Um, so guys, we've got some... Uh... Actually, let me just turn on the light for a second here. Okay, so we've actually got some game books here. And these are some of the same ones we did with Strange Bus uh, last year. So we've got Midnight at Monster Mansion, Twist of Plot, Castle of No Return, Which Way Books, Horrors of the Haunted Museum, also Twist of Plot, Ghost Hunter, which is Choose Your Own Adventure, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings, also Which Way Books. So these are the most Halloween-y themed ones that I grabbed. And of course, this is journalistic review. This is not meant to take the place of, you know, you actually buying these books for yourself and appreciating them in all their full copyrighted uh, glory. So this is intended as fair use. Hey, Strange Bus, welcome. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink my uh, my little beverage here, and I'm going to. Uh, read some game books and you guys are going to help me if you want by using your channel points your gold coins whenever a choice comes up i'll let you choose an option <laughs> i've got a handful of plastic gene steals if you need them oh well, thank you bohemius no that's okay so strange bus i i told him that i wasn't gonna get off work until five but i didn't anticipate that i was going to need to run a bunch of errands before i got home and so i was just thinking oh i'll just fill the usual time slot that would be taken up by the by the rant cast. So sorry about that. If anybody was here at five waiting, I apologize. No voice at all. Sick as a dog. Yeah, get well soon, my man. Get well soon. All right. So yeah, if I if we were playing on on the uh, rant cast channel, we would have no gold coins to use or no channel points yet. But so we've got these options here. So you can choose option one through six. So let the GM decide. Obviously, there isn't always going to be six options. But uh, what? which of these books should we do? We've got five books here. So we'll let you guys vote. Those of you in the chat watching us live on Twitch. So we've got 
options. Vote, please. One is vampires, spies, and alien beings. Two is get uh, ghost hunter three is horrors of the haunted museum four is castle of no return five is midnight at monster mansion and there's no option six I'll give you guys a few minutes to vote here. If you're on Twitch, if you're on YouTube, you don't get to vote. Sorry, you can just fast forward till we choose something. Yeah, you can uh, just click on the little treasure icon below, send a message in the Twitch chat to vote. Under rewards. I figure we'll just take two two hours or or more, depending on if you guys want to go longer. And we can read multiple books, but start by picking one. Nobody has any preferences? And it won't do any good to look at look them up online because I don't think they're available. in digital format for you to cheat with. Cheers, dead gamer. Besides, it's not uh, it's not about cheating, it's about having fun. All right, nobody's going to vote. I guess I'm just going to pick one. We'll probably have time to read them all actually. Now that I think about it. As long as you know how the voting mechanic works, that's the important thing. So once more, I'll explain it in the Twitch chat. Okay, thank you, Strange Bus. <laughs> in the Twitch chat, over on the right-hand side of your screen, depending on what you're using, it may vary, but it'll say send a message. Below that, you'll see a little orange and purple icon. That's gold coins, and you'll see a number. So when you first start, it may be like 100 or 300. Click on that, and you'll just see rewards. It'll say, you know, get started or whatever. Pick pick the option that you want. Okay, so we got some votes. Option one has one vote. Option five has one vote. Now, I can always be the tiebreaker and just pick the one that I want, but anybody else uh, interested? Some of you may be uh, driving in cars or washing dishes or painting or changing a baby diaper climbing a telephone pole and so you aren't able to vote and I understand I totally understand all right I'll give you like another minute if anybody wants to vote for an option you should have a randomizer in case you have a tie vote or something yeah or you have to you have to have two miniatures fight each other like whichever has the better stats dice roll ah ribby Hook us up. Well, then I'd have to get uh, I'd have to get uh, DD dice again. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I mean, somebody could mess with it and make it um, not as good. DD dice. Yeah, I forgot. You can't put www in front of it. Well, we'll try it. We'll see if it uh, if it works. If it makes any difference. Oh, I gotta change my password. Come on. I don't want to do all this. Necrons. <laughs> Hey, Jacer. 
All right, so we're voting uh, on what uh, game book we should read first. So I'm going to repeat the options again. Options one through five. So one is Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. Two is Ghost Hunter. Three is Horrors of the Haunted Museum. Four is Castle of No Return. And five is Midnight at Monster Mansion. Vote with your gold coins. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. One through five. We got to vote for one and we got to vote for five. That's for all you ASMR fans. Just kidding. That's pumpkin spice eggnog. I got to say, it's it's not quite as good as I thought it would be. Especially if you've eaten a lot of Halloween candy already and your taste buds are shot. But I would say the Christmas holiday um, eggnog is superior. Even though it's made by the same people. Mmm. Luca Rocks. Coming in. Technically, it was after the 10 seconds, but I'll give it to you. Pumpkin spice. The pumpkin spice must flow. The pumpkin spice extends life. <laughs> pumpkin spice permits space travel. Pumpkin spice expands consciousness. <laughs> it's found on only one planet in the known universe. Planet of dry, vast deserts. Planets known as Arrakis. And also as Dune. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Pure and unrefined. Yep. They have blue within blue eyes. All that stuff. Okay. All right. So I guess we've got two votes for five. So we will start with Midnight at Monster Mansion. <laughs> I did not say this. I was not here. All right, beware. Okay, and this book is from 1984 by Stephen Otfinoski. Published by Scholastic Incorporated, Parachute Press. This is book number 13, Lucky 13. Beware, do not read this book from beginning to end. You are about to enter a house of countless horrors where your worst nightmares will come true. Read the directions at the bottom of each page carefully. Take your time before turning each page. A different terror lurks behind every door and in each shadow. The slightest misstep could mean instant death, or worse. But don't despair. If you are clever, courageous, or just plain lucky, you may survive the long, dark night in this house of monsters and see the light of day once more. So take a deep breath. Embrace yourself for what lies ahead. Bloodthirsty vampires, howling werewolves, powerful zombies, and Frankenstein's monster himself await your arrival. <laughs> Scarabs. Sleeper must awaken. All right. We begin on page two. What a great vacation. You've been visiting some friends who have a summer house at the beach. Now you're driving home in your father's new sports car, which he finally agreed to lend you for the trip. It's a long drive, and you decide to try a shortcut on a back road. Bad decision. Soon you're hopelessly lost. You look for a place to stop and ask directions, but there isn't a house or building in sight. That's not your only problem. You've been listening to the radio when you should have been paying attention to the gas gauge. The needle's on empty. Will you make it to a gas station before you run out? Your chances don't look good. All at once, you hear a deep rumble in the sky. You look up and see storm clouds gathering overhead. That's all you need. To be stranded in the middle of nowhere is bad enough. But in a thunderstorm, you, you begin to wish you'd stayed on the main highway. Better to get home an hour later than not get home at all. You think to yourself as the first raindrops hit the car roof. Suddenly, you see a house up ahead on the right. Not on the left. <laughs> it's a large ramshackle mansion set on a small hill. The house is dark and gloomy. It looks about a hundred years old. More, more than that now. It reminds you of a house you saw in a horror movie on the Late Late Show last week. A flash of lightning crackles above the mansion, bathing the old house in an eerie glow. You feel cold shivers run down your spine. 
You don't like the idea of going up to that house, but you also don't want to spend the night in your father's car during a thunderstorm. If someone is home at the house, you can ask to use the phone and call a gas station for help. This is the days before cell phones. Then again, if there's one house, maybe you'll pass more houses, ones that don't ones that look less creepy. That is, if you don't run out of gas first. What are you going to do? You better make up your mind quickly. The driveway to the mansion is coming up fast. Okay. Decision time. <laughs> yes. Decision time. Option one. Decide to keep going and take your chances on the road. Option two. Choose to stop and see if anyone is at home. Alright. I'll give you guys some, some time to decide here. Not a full five minutes. We don't need that. Just get myself a bookmark here. Let's use a potion card. Okay, yes. Uh, the options are keep going. Option two, stop and see if anyone is home. Okay, so we've got some votes. So we've got one for option, two for option one, three for option two. Play some Skinnerd! Except Skinnerd is not royalty free. Freebird! <laughs> okay. Um, oh, we're playing an ad? Okay. Option one. Okay, one, two, three. Three to three. It's a tie. And no, you can't vote twice in the same. <laughs> Is that all the people we have? Ah, uh, fleshy, fleshy stab for, for effect. He stabbed one of the voters. Now we got to start over. No, I'm kidding. 82 Brute. Then Fall Caesar. 3 to 3. I mean, I could be the tiebreaker. Come on, we got one more vote. Anybody else? Option 1 or option 2? Keep driving. Stop at the house. That's that's great that it's a tie. I mean, I could just roll a die, I guess. Maybe I'm blaming this one on you. Okay, uh, let's see. Oops. D2. Okay, it came out of one. So it's option one. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to keep on driving. Alright, guys. And as we always used to do back in the day, you put your finger there. <laughs> in case it's a sudden death. Okay. You pass the driveway and continue down the road in the pouring rain. You wonder how many... See, it's always a, a toss-up between, like, what would I do in real life or what would I do if I knew I was in a movie? <laughs> you pass the driveway and continue driving down the road in the pouring rain. You wonder how many more miles you can cover before the car conks out. Suddenly, you see a sign by the roadside. It says, gas and food, one mile ahead. You breathe a deep sigh of relief and think how smart you were for not stopping at that old mansion. As you dream about the juicy cheeseburger and chocolate shake you're going to order when you stop, you round a sharp curve and skid head on into a 10 ton truck coming the other way. Too bad you'll never taste that cheeseburger. The end. Well, guys, uh, I want to thank you all for joining us. <laughs> Unfortunately, the call to adventure, guys, the call to adventure. Okay, well, if we want to give Midnight Monster Mansion another try, I think we're going to have to take the other choice. What do you think? <laughs> Tough luck, Space Cadet. Okay. We warp back. Okay, if you choose to stop and see if anyone is at home. Okay, so we're uh, repeating ourselves. Okay, you drive up the long, twisting driveway. The house looks even creepier up close. The worn shutters are all closed. But you can see light downstairs. Someone must be home. You park the car and carefully lock it. Your father would kill you if anything happened to it. Slow, slowly, you walk up the front porch steps. 
They squeak noisily under your feet. You feel your courage draining away, but you raise your fist and rap loudly on the door. There's a long silence. You knock again. You can hear your heart beating wildly under the noise of the rain and thunder. Finally, you hear footsteps approaching. The door swings open and a short, stocky man in a butler's uniform stands before you. He is unshaven. His hair is long and scraggly. You can't help but notice he has a hunchback. He looks you up and down with beady brown eyes. Well, he says in a low, gruff voice, it's about time you got here. Take a step back, startled. This butler has obviously mistaken you for someone else. Don't just stand there, fool! He exclaims impatiently. Come in! The master is waiting. If the master looks anything like a servant, you could do without meeting him. But it's cold and damp out there in the rain. Behind the butler, you see a warm, inviting fire. Should you accept the invitation or run for your car and take your chances on the road ahead? <laughs> Smart choice, though. It's the best one. Ah, uh, okay. Decision time once again. Option one. Go into the house. Option two, return to your car. <laughs> okay, we've got a vote for option one and a vote for option two. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, once again, a tie. Well, time passed. <laughs> it's a tie again. So, it's going to be one of those nights. See, this is just like when we play Hero Quest. We got people trying to kill the heroes, and we got people trying to help them. And uh, the scales of order and chaos balance each other out. Can I revote? Sure. Major Asenable. I feel like we're going to die anyway. Well, death does come for us all. Even for immortal vampires, eventually they uh, get what's coming to them. <laughs> but that's part of the fun. You want to see all the ways that you can die. Okay, so Asnable changes his vote to one. So we got one, two, three, four. Okay, we're going with option one. We're going into the house. Despite uh, this Igor looking guy standing in the way. You give the hunchback your brightest, bravest smile and step inside. The main hall is filled with heavy, old fashioned furniture. You notice cobwebs everywhere, but the fire is warm. That's the important thing. Wait here, says the hunchback, closing the door. In a moment, a tall, distinguished looking gentleman in a black cape and evening clothes enters with the servant. Ah, he says in a thick foreign accent. You're here at last. I trust your drive wasn't too difficult. I am Dr. Alucard, and this is my servant, Igor. Igor. It figures right out of an old horror movie. And Alucard, that name sounds familiar too. Please take off your jacket, and I will bring you to the patient at once. We have no time to lose, Alucard says. Patient? You thought he was the doctor. Not that he looks like one. Maybe it's time you told these people just who you really are before you get into deep trouble. Of course, they may throw you back out in the storm if you do. Decision time once again. Option one, decide to set this Alucard character straight right now. Option two, decide to play along a little, a little while longer. So decision time again. Yeah, they come quick. Okay, so we got a vote for one and a vote for two. You guys are just messing with me tonight, I know it. Alright, anybody else gonna vote? Another vote for option one, okay. Thank you, Wardicon. And Asnable. Oh! Three votes for this time. Yeah, see, if we had a, a population of thousands, it would be more difficult to do this. We'd have to have some kind of, like, voting app or something. We'd have to be explaining to people how it worked. 
Ah, Bohemius with option three. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no option three. It's just one or two this time. So Bohemius, you can, you can, uh... oh, you already voted for two. Just being, being silly. <laughs> and Medrasm will voted twice. So we're only going to count one of his votes. So we got one, two, one, two. So it's, it's still a tie. The vote options are out of order in that thingy. Yeah, I guess I could fix that, couldn't I? I should put like one, two, three at the at the top. Sorry about that. There is a delay. Yes, that is true. There is a delay because um, if you're not in Discord with me, you're not seeing it in real time. Well, no, I guess it doesn't matter because it's it's the Twitch chat that's that's appearing, not Discord chat. Okay. Okay, so we got two votes for one and two votes for two. Am I going to decide this one by dice roll again? Over the line, Smokey. just gonna be it's just gonna be dice roll dice roll choose your own adventure twist a plot which way okay all right option two that's what I got I should get in on discord discord is uh, is free it's uh, no big deal really Okay, so it looks like we're going with option two this time. That was my tiebreaker. So we're gonna play along a little, little bit longer. You decide to keep your true identity a secret for a little while longer and follow Dr. Alucard. Well, here it is. It started going on the blink this afternoon and it hasn't been the same since. Dr. Alucard is pointing to a large television set. The TV is the patient that you've been mistaken, and you've been mistaken for a television repairman. Alucard begins to eye you suspiciously for the first time. You can fix it, can't you? He asks. Sure, you say. You're in this too deep to tell the truth now. You turn on the set, trying to act as professional as possible. Look at the colors, says Alucard. Aren't they a bit odd? You stare at the small screen. The bright colors are swirling around like the colored bits of glass in a kaleidoscope. Red's the color of blood. Vivid greens. Disturbing dark blues. Round and round the colors go, hypnotizing you. you. Feel your will being sucked right out of your body. You want to tear your eyes away from the diabolical patterns, but you can't. Out of the corner of your eye, you spy an ashtray. Thanks, Asnival. Uh, okay, option time again. See, we didn't even have time to wait for the other one to expire. Okay, so option one, continue to watch the set. Option two, grab the ashtray and smash the screen. Okay, decision time with your votes. So option one, keep watching. Option two, smash the screen. Okay, we gotta vote for option two. Yeah, I see it'll say option two and then one. One is how many gold coins it costs because I just want it to be easy. Anybody can do it. Four votes for option two. It seems unanimous. Everybody wants to smash the screen. Smash the screen. Smash the screen. Okay. Anybody else? Last call. Looks like op option two is going to take it. So grab the ashtray and smash the screen. One of us. One of us. Give a gaba. Give a gaba. 
or whatever it was. Okay. All right, here we go. You seize the ashtray in your trembling hand and raise it. Before you can hurl it at the evil screen, the colors disappear, and an unearthly glow fills the tube. The screen sends out blinding rays of light that freeze you in mid-motion. Every muscle in your body is paralyzed. Your raised hand quivers, and you drop the ashtray against your will. With horror, you feel your whole body being drawn towards the glowing screen. A terrible, tingling sensation comes over you. You want to scream, but you can't move your mouth. You feel as if every molecule of your body is disintegrating. Suddenly, you open your eyes. You see Alicord and Igor standing several feet away, staring down at you. Your bodies are strangely distorted, as if you were looking at them through a mirror or a piece of warped glass. Alicard moves toward you. His hand reaches down for the off button on the TV set. Only then do you realize why everything looks so strange. You're inside the television set as Alicard pushes the button. The entire universe goes black. You're a prisoner inside the television, forever trapped, forever looking out at reality. Happy viewing. The end. <laughs> All right. Shall we try again? <laughs> I'm liking this. I'm enjoying this. Okay, if we warp back in time... All right. We can continue to watch the set or we can smash it with the ashtray. Well, smashing it with the... Smashing the screen wasn't so great. See, some of these books, you know, they uh, there's only one good ending and, you know, you can, you can die or you can get trapped in time and you swirl around. These ones, they just had no mercy at all. It's like, nope. You're dead. Okay, let's try continue watching the set. <laughs> the terrible colors from the screen seem to be swirling around in your head. Your body is swaying from side to side. You feel Alucard taking your hand in his warm one. Come, my friend, he says gently. You don't look well. Perhaps you should lie down for a while. You want to say you're not his friend, but you can't seem to get your lips to form the words. Instead, you nod tipsily as he leads you from the den to a hall where a long staircase looms darkly before you. That's the last thing you remember before you lose consciousness. Turn the page fast. Fast as I can. You wake up in darkness. You're lying on a small bed and your head is throbbing with pain. How long have you been out? You look out the window by your bed and you see it is still night, but the storm has passed. You get up and are relieved to find that only your head is in bad shape. The rest of you seems to be intact. You cross to a wall and feel your way along until you come to a door. You try the knob and find it unlocked. Just then you hear footsteps approaching. You step back in fear footsteps draw closer. Is it Alucard coming to get you? There's no telling what that madman will do to you next. You rush back to the window and open it. The roof slants down below you. It's a long drop to the ground, but you can hide on the roof until Alucard and his servant get tired of looking for you. Later, you can make your escape from inside. Footsteps are nearly at your door. Alright. Option time once again. Decision. Option one. Decide to climb out the window. Option two, decide to wait and see if the footsteps go past the door. So you can vote. Option one, climb on the roof. Option two, wait by the door. Okay, so we got so far we got two votes for option two. Wait by the door. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're probably like, "Come on, guys!" <laughs> Shouting at the screen. Okay, so we got two votes for waiting at the door. Three votes. Waiting at the door. You've probably seen too many horror movies of people falling off roofs, right? Or getting struck by lightning, or... Come on, I'm here! Do it! Kill me! What are you waiting for? 
I'm here! Come on! <laughs> yep. Yeah, I wore a, a Predator helmet for uh, Halloween. Uh, going out with the kids trick or treating. I didn't have the full get up though, unfortunately. So I just wore like a scary t-shirt and some gloves and I had a wig, but I mean, I didn't have the dreadlocks. So just had some like stringy gray hair. It was kind of funny, but no one could tell who I was. I've seen my own real face and believe me, <laughs> you have not seen what I've seen. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's people that do way way better Arnold impressions, but yeah, it's kind of like Macho Man Randy Savage. Everybody, you know, you work on it. Anybody can do a halfway decent impression. <laughs> yeah, impersonation. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna wait by the door. I know this isn't an exact science. You wait and listen, holding your breath. Footsteps are directly outside your door. They pause for a moment and then continue on. You let out a long sigh of relief. You wait for the footsteps to fade away. And you open the door very cautiously and look down the darkened hall. There's not a soul in sight. You quietly step out into the hall and walk down toward a staircase. You can get to the main floor. If you can get to the main floor without being seen, there's a good chance you can find an open door and escape. Just then, you hear a sound coming from behind a door along the hallway. It sounds like someone crying. Stop to listen. Whoever it is sounds very unhappy, but it, is it any of your concern when your own life may be in danger? Alright, I guess we've got an ad break. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, the choices are decide to investigate, or save your own skin and get down those stairs. So I'll put down the options here, decision time. I'll give you guys some extra time because of because uh, of the ad. All right. So what's happened is. You waited by the door, footsteps went by, you snuck out, you saw a staircase, then you start to hear the sound of someone crying. So option one, check out the sound. Option two, save your own skin and get out of there. Get down the stairs. So we got one vote for option one. That's investigate the crying sound. Three votes for option oh four. See these are heroes right here. Let's check that out. Protect the innocent. Hopefully it's not like a <laughs> a monster decoy or something. So I do investigate. Okay, let's do it. Four votes. You go to the door where the crying is coming from and try the doorknob. It's locked. Who, who is it? Whispers a frightened voice through the door. A friend, you reply. Please get me out of here before he comes back. That's all you needed to hear. You brace your shoulder and throw your weight against the door. The old lock breaks away and the door swings open. Standing there is a boy about your age. He is thin and weak. How did you get here? You ask. Alucard called the charity I work for. He said he wanted to make a contribution. I came here and was drugged with a drink. I've been his prisoner in this room ever since. My name is Chris. Now I see why he called for a TV repairman, you say. He wanted another victim and mistook me for him. Unlucky for you, says Chris grimly. You know what he has in mind for us, don't you? Alucard's going to use our bodies in his experiments. He's got this monster he's building in a dungeon in the basement. He's almost finished. 
But all he needs is a brain and a heart. That's where we come in. Yikes. Suddenly you don't feel so well. He's told me his whole mad scheme, continues Chris. As soon as he finds the proper brain to go with my heart, Alucard's going to start operating. And then I have a feeling you've been elected. I'm not all that smart, you say, suddenly wishing you were a lot dumber. The only way to stop him is for us to get into the laboratory and destroy everything, says your new friend. Now that you've freed me from this room, we can do it together. You shake your head. I think we should just worry about getting out of this place alive, you say. Once we're safe, we can tell the police everything. They'll be able to handle Alucard a lot better than, than we could. No, exclaims Chris. We've got to stop him now. Okay, decision time. <laughs> hey, Gravendall Games, we're playing some game books. We got uh, Midnight at Monster Mansion. Twist to plot number 13. And we're doing options. Okay, so option one, go with Chris's plan to destroy the lab. Option two, insist on getting out of the mansion first. So vote if you're watching us live on Twitch. Is he Chris Redfield? Option two. All right, so option one, destroy the lab, Chris's plan. Option two, get out of there, call the cops. <laughs> so we've got one vote for option one so far. Yeah, you were driving in the rain and you stopped at a house because you were out of gas in the thunderstorm. And this weird Igor looking guy and Dr. Alucard thought you were the TV repairman. And you start to get like hypnotized <laughs> from the TV <laughs> Uh, and then they put you in a room and then you find this guy crying. He's locked in a room and he's telling you this crazy story about what Alucard is going to do to you. You can call the cops in a story like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but who do they work for? Ah, maybe Alucard's paid him off. <laughs> or maybe they won't get there in time. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, ah, 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 votes. I mean, can't. He can't call the cops in a story like this. The phone line's dead or, you know, something. All right, so we're going with option one, Chris's plan. So crazy just might work. I suppose... It is our duty to stop Alucard's plan, you say. Lead the way. Chris takes you up a rickety, narrow staircase to the attic, in a large room with a skylight. Test tubes and glass beakers filled with brightly colored chemicals line one wall. In the center of the room is a raised platform with a crank. That's where Alucard will raise the monster to revive him with lightning from the storm, explains Chris. That is correct, Chris, says a familiar voice from across the room. Too bad neither of you will be around to see it. We both look and turn and to stare into the smiling face of Dr. Alucard. Igor is blocking the door you just came through. So, the two of you have met, eh? Says the doctor. How very nice! It is only proper, since you will soon be sharing an operating table. Run! Chris cries, and you do. But the only place to run to is a wall. You bump into two switches. One is red, the other is blue. Pull the switch, cries your friend. It shuts off the lights. Fine, you think to yourself, but which is the right switch? So we've got two options, the red switch or the blue switch. So option one is red. Option two, blue. So decision time again. Vote for the option you think. <laughs> well played. Okay, so we got a vote for blue and a vote for red. I guess the choice is purple. <laughs> it's it's a binary choice. You got to figure it out. Okay, Bohemius voted. Literally can't even trust anything that is col red color. Yeah, cut the red wire. 
lights off. Would, why, why would one of those colors turn the lights off? I mean, how does Chris know anything? I mean, he told me his whole mad plan, he claims, but can we trust him? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so two votes for red and two votes for blue. Ah, once again. Anybody else? Anybody else uh, watching this live? Option one red, option two blue. <laughs> D2. Yeah, I'm gonna have to roll. I'm gonna have to be the tiebreaker again. Two. Okay, I chose blue. All right, let's see uh, if Ruby's dice were merciful. Okay, we pull the blue switch. The lights go off. Phew. You're lost in the darkness. Someone cries out and you feel a hand across yours and, you, and pull you across the floor. In a few moments, you're in the hallway. Chris, who is holding your hand, lets go of it. Together, you run down the staircase and out the front door. The car is still waiting in the gravel driveway. You fumble in your pocket for the keys. Hurry, cries Chris. You find the keys and open both doors. As you slip the key in the ignition, you see Igor bounding out the front door of the mansion. You turn the key. The engine won't start. What's the matter, asks Chris. Sounding very nervous. Oh, thank you, Ravendell. Ravendell Games, get to the Tier 1 sub. The G GJ Foxy. Excellent. Alright, we'll let uh, Pomp and Circumstance play. Oh yeah! Dig it! I am the green. This guy. Alright, so you turn the key in the ignition. What's the matter? Says Chris. It's low on gas, you explain. Try to start the car again. Igor is coming straight at you with a wooden club. And he means business. Alright, we've got two options. Option one, if you know something about cars. Option two, if you... Don't know a stick shift from an emergency brake. <laughs> now, is this saying like like in universe, like your your character doesn't know this, or like you personally? Are they going to ask you some like car questions? Okay, vote now. See, some of this I remember from my childhood and some I don't, so. I want to check my dipstick. I'm a professional. <laughs> Good job, Ruby. Okay, so we've got some uh, some uh, gearheads in the, in the audience. And we've got uh, one honest man who lets the chauffeur do all the work. Okay. <laughs> all right. So three votes for one and one vote for two. Okay, all right. I think we're gonna go with the know something about cars. So what do you do when you're out of gas? No. Start pushing. What does it say here? All right, this time the engine starts like a dream. You floor the gas pedal and the car shoots down the driveway, throwing gravel into the air. You look into the rear view mirror at Igor. He's jumping up and down, beating his club on the driveway. You can't help laughing at the sight of him. What's so funny? That's Chris. You're laughing too hard to answer. The end. <laughs> Alright, and I'm going to show you the picture, just because it, it is great, of him just like having a tantrum as you drive off. A couple of tire thumbs. Kicked a tire or two. <laughs> Okay, well, at least we survived. So that was our first good ending after a couple of deaths. Do you want to keep trying? Uh, keep trying some other uh, stuff? Or should we switch to the next book? That's Midnight at Monster Mansion. There's there's a lot more to this book. I've, I've read it before. It says 30 possible endings. Food probe. Oh, <laughs> Ford. Ford probe. Well... I mean, there were several choices there. So, what do you think? Should we uh, should we do a fresh book, or should we 
try again with this one. Red button. Should we go back to the red button? Let's get Carl Casey back. White bad audio. Yeah, the only the only bad thing about streaming it is that I have to wait before I repost on YouTube, but it's kind of a fun thing to do. Halloween, All Saints Day, Day of the Dead, All Souls Day. It's kind of a special time. All right, so if we warp back to when we had we had we were hanging out with Chris already, but it was a question of which uh, which color um, switch to throw. Man, this book really takes me back. I want to say it was one of those things where they went came to our school and it's like, oh, you can order these books from our catalog. You know, great way to make money, right? But it was supposed to, you know, encourage kids to read. It was like twist a plot pack. It was like this book and the Golden Sword of Dragon Walk. And I think this is my original book from the 80s, from back then. So I mean, it's all like yellowed and everything. But Golden Sword of Dragon Walk, I couldn't find, so I bought it online like not too long ago and it was in bad shape but it was probably in as good a shape as my original book was but yeah that's the first time i'd heard of twist a plot and i don't know they were just they were written a little differently than choose your own adventures because choose your own adventure like went through those different periods those different stages so you had like the books that were just like quick gory deaths after quick gory deaths and then there were ones they tried to be more educational so there was like a lot of history and culture and stuff in between and and they had ones that were like completely non-violent it was just like oh well you didn't didn't find the treasure or oh you didn't get to meet george washington oh well you know and then they had ones where it's like oh man there was one where you went to south africa and it's like yes i can you know save people i can you know commit great acts of justice or something it's like nope nope no matter what you do nothing nothing changes like nothing happens and then you know apartheid ended for real and it's like oh well it's kind of a short-sighted book there but yeah um they were kind of all over the place depending on the author whereas some of these other series is they didn't have as many authors so maybe you had just a specific style plus they were trying to stand out i don't i i think the twist of plots were pretty cool for someone you know of a certain age in that that time gravendall games says yeah i think the 30 endings are counting all the deaths Gravendall game. Let me just read these comments and I'll go back to it. When I first started programming and made a game, it was basically a choose your own adventure book. Yeah, people did that. This brings me back to those days as well. Jason says I used to borrow them from the school library. Yes, I wasn't allowed to use them for book reports. Yeah, yeah, they're all written in the second person. You. Well, the the thing is though, when you're reading these books, I mean, the great thing about these, because I know some school teachers got in trouble for reading books like on streams. Because it's like, oh, you read the whole book. You know, now you're infringing our copyright because we could have sold an audiobook or something. But with the Twi Choose Your Own Adventure, every time you read it, it's a different story. So it's like, okay, 30 different variations. You're not reading it, you know, the complete text. So it's, it's kind of neat. So it's a little bit of an extra protection. Plus, I don't know, I just, I, I like that it isn't just completely shock value. Like, oh, you walk through a door and then your head got ripped clean off oh no <laughs> you know it's just like but it's they try to scare you they try to put in a mystery and i like the ones where there's a little bit of a logic to it so it isn't just like random like oh you went left and that was death you know like no there's some there has to be some clue something you can figure out uh but yeah i would go to school the school library or the public library the public library had way more uh because the school library like kids will check them out but yeah the public library and you just get a stack of them and I don't know, I'd just be there for so many hours and I would just like read through a huge stack. And then at the end of the evening, it was like pick like three of them to check out, to take home. And so I don't remember if I picked the ones that I really liked so far, like I was really getting into or ones that just like I didn't hadn't read yet. So it was like the bottom of the pile. But yeah, some of them are really scary. Like there was one, I can't remember what it was called, but it was about like psychic powers. And the book was trying to convince you that like you really did have psychic powers, not that it was just a story in the book. So it was like, whoa, is that real? Like, <laughs> and I think you had to guess the number that was on a certain page. And I didn't guess it right. And I was like, oh, okay, it's fake. <laughs> or I just don't have psychic powers. But it was just, yeah, it was kind of funny. Because, you know, it just, it just gets into your head. Okay, so let's go back. All right, so um, 
Pull the switch, cries your friend. It shuts off the lights. Fine, think to yourself, but which is the right switch? Is the red switch or the blue switch? So if we instead say, we pull the red switch. Too bad, wrong switch. The red switch sets off a charge of dynamite under the foundation of the mansion. It blows the entire building sky high, laboratory and all. Happy landing. The end. <laughs> okay, well, all right, I guess that was an example of what I was talking about, the sudden death option. Ribby, I knew it. Yeah, the red. Red for blow up. The red, the red wire for detonate the bomb. See, it's like, yeah, okay, so if the kids have seen a lot of, like, TV shows, it'd be like, okay, the red wire is always the bad one. Red means bad. Never cut the red wire. Come on. MacGyver taught you this. <laughs> but hey, you got to ruin his plan. That's true. Now Alucard will... Its threat to the world has been stopped. Sacrifices had to be made. <laughs> Wrong choice. Yep. Well, man. Well, I guess we'll just have to save it for the next the next round. Okay, guys, let's uh, let's pick another book. We can always come back to this at the end or at the next Halloween extravaganza. Or if you find a copy of this online, find it cheap. I would highly recommend Midnight at Monster Mansion, especially if you were a kid in the '80s. If you liked uh, the late, late, late show <laughs> and uh, horror movies, classic uh, monster tales. I mean, you've got Frankenstein's monster, you've got Dracula, I mean, Alucard, come on. And you've got Igor, so you got a haunted mansion, can't go wrong there. All right, and we are playing an ad, so uh, let's see, we've got four books left. We've got Vampire Spies and Alien Beings, we've got Ghost Hunter, I'm 19. Horrors of the Haunted Museum. Really? Born in the 80s. How old do you think I am? How dare you? I wasn't born in the 80s. I was born in the 70s. Castle of No Return. All right. Vote on our choices. So I'll wait for the ad to end. So anybody who's just not a subscriber can see it. All right, we are voting on the next book. So option one, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. Option two, Ghost Hunter. Option three, Horrors of the Haunted Museum. Option four, Castle of No Return. Use your gold coins in the t live Twitch chat to vote on which book we should read next, which game book. The nice thing is none of these involve rolling dice, so I don't have to have a character sheet or anything like that. Option four, option three, option two. Jacer says, my first 20 AOL web pages were a choose your own adventure with life and sanity points. You could end up insane, dead, or survivor ending. Ah, nice, I like that. Yeah, I kind of remember the, I don't know if I went to your web webpage, Jacer, but I, I kind of remember those. Uh, people would do choose your own adventures like on web pages. And actually, um, the creators of um, Lone Wolf uh, did a page called Project Aeon. A-E-O-N? A-E-O-N. Yeah, Project Aeon, and it was uh, the complete text of all the uh, uh, Lone Wolf and World of Lone Wolf, Greystar the Wizard, game books. And they had permission to do everything except for the illustrations. They didn't have the il original illustrations. Because um, Joe Deaver wrote the books, and then Gary Chalk, who of course also did Fighting Fantasy and Warhammer and HeroQuest, the original, uh, a lot of those illustrations. He did the illustrations for Lone Wolf and uh, Ash Quest Amalgam Ash has started doing the Lone Wolf books and I, I wanted to watch his videos so badly but I also was like no no I don't want to spoil it I want to like read them myself again for the first time after all these years and I want to do my own streams so as much as I wanted to watch his streams I didn't <laughs> so I'd still recommend checking them out 
I've heard that they've they've started republishing the Lone Wolf books, but they've revised and changed them somewhat. Because I guess the series went on and on, and so they went back and they revised the early books to like retcon some things. And I was like, nah. I think three could be really spooky. Yeah, sorry, got off talking about. But eventually we'll get to those. I have done the um, the Dave Morris Hero Quest books. Those are probably the most complicated ones that I've done on these streams. But I also have like the Narnia books. They have character sheets and dice. Um, the Time Machine books. They're the ones where there's only one ending and you can get trapped in time, and they tend to be longer. They're for like older kids. There's um, Star Challenge. There's one where you have to do like basic programming. I, I don't know how that one works. I guess I would just skip those segments because I'm going to be like coding on the air. I, <laughs> I haven't studied basic in so long, I probably couldn't do it. Okay, well, anyway, um, book three, let's see, one, two, two votes for three, four, two. Okay. Oh, three votes for three. All right, so it looks like three has it. So we will do Horrors of the Haunted Museum, which is Twist of Plot number nine. As you can see, Twist of Plot is kind of a popular choice. Yeah, because Children Adventure, I can't remember if they were the very first one or not, but they started in the 70s. And I want to shout out, if you're still still with us in this in this life, uh, Nick Voss. Apparently related to Luke Voss, who was the original owner of this book. This is also from Scholastic Incorporated. 1983 by Robert Stein. R.L. Stein. You Goosebump fans may recognize him. Okay, this is not one that I had as a kid. We'll start reading. You're not serious about spending the night in this place, are you? Your friend Mike asks. Of course I'm serious, you reply, leaning against the totem pole in the far corner of the American Indian room. Kelly and Derek both dared us, and we accepted. We can't chicken out now. Mike rests his elbows on the top of a glass case that contains an authentic model of an Indian Pueblo. But you don't believe all that garbage about this museum being haunted? About the mummy coming to life every night? Neither do I. So what's the point? He asks. The point is, they dared us, you say. A bell rings that signal that the museum is closing. A museum guard pokes his head into the American Indian room, but he doesn't see you or Mike. Point is, I don't care. I'm going home, Mike says. Maybe you're a little scared after all, you suggest. Mike waves a fist at you in pretend anger. The bell rings again. You hear the footsteps on the marble floor of the last people leaving the museum. The two of you continue to argue. Your mind is made up. You're spending the night in the museum. Will you be able to convince Mike to stay with you? Turn the page. It's a dumb idea. We'll get in trouble, Mike says, starting to walk toward the exit. What about our parents? We took care of that, you remind him. You said you were staying at my house, and I said I was staying at your house. Another museum guard passes by. He doesn't see the two of you in the far corner. Outside the room's only window, you see that the sun is almost set. The museum grows silent. Silence is complete. I'm sorry, Mike says, but I just don't want to do this. I'm not chicken or anything. I just want to go home and have supper. See ya. He walks quickly towards the main hall and the exit. You start to go after him. You change your mind. Okay, fine, you tell yourself. I'll stay here without him. You listen to his footsteps clicking on the cold floors, fading into the, dis into the distance. The lights in the room dim. The air conditioner shuts off. Stand and wait for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. A few minutes go by. What a story this will be to tell. Just about everyone you know has talked about spending in the night in this creepy place, but you are actually doing it. Hey, wait a minute. What are those footsteps? They're getting louder. Definitely coming your way. Slow, slow footsteps. Who could be walking so slowly? So quietly, should you turn and run? Or should you wait to see who approaches? 
All right, decision time. Option one, run. <laughs> Option two, see who's coming. All right, vote your choice. Option one, run. Option two, wait and see who it is. <laughs> Nobody wants to run. Okay, Ribby wants to run. So I see three votes for wait and see who it is. Okay. Two votes to run. But still three votes for waiting to see who it is. All right. Thanks for thanks for participating, guys. All right. <clears throat> oh, Bohemius had to vote. Sorry, sorry there, Bohemius. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two. All right. Looks like the twos have it. Anybody else? Anybody else I'm missing? Please uh, vote if you're in the live chat. Looks like we're gonna wait and see who it is. Note I'm leaving out the page numbers, not to confuse anybody. You've never known true terror before, but you're pretty sure that's what you're feeling now. Your arms and legs are shaking so badly you're not sure you can get them to move. The footsteps come closer. Closer. Closer! Who is it? It can't be the night watchman. He'd be carrying a flashlight. Perhaps the stories about this old museum are true. Perhaps the mummy really does the walk the floors at night. Perhaps, hey, it's me, Mike says. I'm back. The door was already locked. I couldn't get out. I had a hard time finding you in the dark. I had to walk really slowly so I wouldn't bump into anything. Hey, are you all right? Fine, you say. I'm fine. Wait a few seconds for your heart to stop pounding. Guess we're in this thing together now. Just the two of us. You say it finally. Uh-oh, says Mike suddenly grabbing your arm. I think there's three of us. Sure enough, there are new footsteps clicking on the marble floor. These footsteps are approaching quickly. Stay calm. Stay calm, you whispered to Mike. Stay calm. Stop repeating yourself, Mike whispers. Have you gone nuts or something? This is no time for discussion, you whisper. We gotta get out of here. Good thinking, Mike whispers. Footsteps are in the same room as you. Has someone heard the two of you? Or is someone making his ghostly rounds in his lightly search for human victims? Staying close together so that you can see each other, you and Mike run into the back hallway. Two rooms stand in front of you. To escape the approaching footsteps, you must duck into the Egyptian mummy room. <laughs> That's right, the Egyptian mummy room, or the Caribbean pirates room, or Car Caribbean pirates room. Quick, make your choice. So decision time once again. Option one, mummy room. Option two, pirate room. Okay, so Jacer wants pirates. Okay, so we got a vote for each. Okay, we got two votes for pirates. Third vote for pirates. Wow, okay. Looks like the majority want pirates. I mean, there's a mummy on the front, so it's like, okay, maybe the pirates won't kill us, or maybe they will. Oh crap, they're afraid of the mummy. So went pirate. Yeah. That's okay, we can always uh, try it again. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh, Bohemius is voting multiple times. Okay, it's, it's, you're, you're getting me, Bohemius. Okay, <laughs> two, 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 two. Stop repeating yourself. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. He voted five times. Okay, so, but still, even if we ignore the, the ballot, ballot stuffing, we've got uh, four votes for, for two. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Bohemius. 
I gotta watch this guy. He's gonna get me one of these times. Okay. All right, we go with the pirate's room. You run through the doorway into the Caribbean pirate's room, or Caribbean pirate's room. In the dim light, you can make out the life-size pirate ship that you've seen many times before. Standing in the bow of the ship is a mannequin of a pirate captain wearing a long-handled saber at his waist and a black eye patch over one eye. I don't hear the footsteps anymore, says Mike as you, as you both look around the familiar museum room. I think we lost him, wherever it was. Hey, look at that pirate captain, Mike says, a little louder than you'd wish. They fixed him up, remember? He was all beat up and his clothes were torn the last time we were here. Come aboard, mateys, gravelly voice says suddenly. You look up to see the pirate captain beckoning down to you from his place in the ship. Come aboard, sprightly now. Old Johnny Poison's been expecting ye. But you don't know what to do. Do you take your chances aboard the pirate ship with the Captain Johnny Poison? Or do you turn down his invitation and try to run away from the mannequin come to life? All right, decision time once again. Option one, get aboard the ship. Option two, run. <laughs> okay, one vote for customer. Option one, get aboard. Option two, run. Oh, Major Asimov has to sleep now. Okay, well, I hope you uh, have pleasant dreams of you not being trapped in a museum. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And a very late, belated happy Halloween. All right, we've got two votes for option one. Get aboard the ship. Anybody else? That is option three is always an option is just go to bed. <laughs> you got things to do, I understand. You're tired tired of me uh, tired of me killing you. I can understand that too. Thanks for doing this. These are fun. Yeah, it's it's good good clean fun. A little blast from the past. And I mean these books are like which would you rather have? A book where you read like 20, 30 pages and then you get a choice? Or just every, you know, action, action, action. Of course, it's kind of like, as a kid, you just, you've got like three bookmarks and you're like, okay, if I do this path, I'm going to win. If I do this other path, I'm going to get killed. <laughs> yeah. Well, we hadn't done it in a long time, so I thought it'd be good, good to do it. Okay. Well, so far it looks like it's unanimous for option one. All right. So we're going to get aboard the ship. Don't stand there, be jabbering, if you know what's best for ye, pirate captain calls. You're so stunned that this mannequin has come to life, you follow the pirate's instructions. You and Mike walk up the gangplank of the model ship. Before you know it, you're standing on the deck, facing what seems to be a living 18th century pirate. Allow me introduce myself to ye, captain says with a small bow. I be Captain Johnny Poison, sailing these many years under the proud flag of the Jolly Roger. Uh, how do you do, he managed to blurt out. Not well, me hearty, not well, he replies, scratching his stubble of a beard. I be landlocked here, can't get a wind to fill me sails. A windless sky means a lonely life for Captain Johnny. Gosh, that's too bad, you say. You stare at this character from two centuries ago and ask yourself, can this really be happening? There's nothing we can do to help, Mike says. I be thinking twice before ye utter these words, lad, Pirate says, his face squinting into an evil frown. He pulls out his broadsword and holds it up to your throat. You'll help me, or you'll face me blade. Without thinking, you reach your hand over to the captain's table and pick up another sword that is lying there. Take a step back and raise the sword to fight. Wait, Mike says, don't fight. Uh, we'll help you, Captain Johnny. We'll do something. Has Mike lost his mind? What can you possibly do to help this pirate? You must decide what to do. Fight him? 
so that you can get off his, this mysterious ship or agree to help him and then pray that you can think of something. All right, option time once again. This is, grog, grog. <laughs> Depends, do you watch Genuine Vision? <laughs> okay, I'm not sure the reference to that. Um, okay, so option one is to fight. Option two is try to help. <laughs> Dual Monkey Island style. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I could beat him in a sword fight. I could, if, if it would involve just clicking a mouse really quickly, I bet I could beat him. <laughs> I'm thinking of like Pirate's Gold. Of course, in the Genesis version with the controller, it was a lot easier. I mean, to feel like you were really controlling it rather than just like click, 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 click. <laughs> okay, well, a lot of brave souls st trying to stand and fight. Got those lightsabers and those shields. Alright, so we want to fight him. Johnny Poison. Refuses a poison blade. Alright, looks like we're going to fight him. Okay. Nice knowing you all. Alright. You raise the sword and swing it with all your strength. It goes right through the pirate captain. You swing again. The sword goes right through him as if he isn't there. You're nothing but a ghost, you scream. Captain Johnny drops his sword. He lowers his eyes as if embarrassed, shrugs his shoulders sadly. Put down your sword too. You actually find yourself feeling sorry for the poor guy. You can see something out of the corner of your eye. I think I can, I can help you, Captain, you say. You turn and you walk down the gangplank. Mike follows right behind you. You walk over to a table on the other side of the museum room. There's a large electric fan on the table. This should help, Captain Johnny. Or you yell it across the room. This should help, Captain Johnny. You yell across the room. You turn on the fan and watch as the pirate ship's sails fill with wind. Ah, that be a fine wind. Thank you kindly, Captain Johnny says with a big grin. Gives you a wave as the ship sails off out of sight. That didn't really happen, did it? Mike asks. You don't know what to say. Two of you are standing in an absolutely empty room. The end. All right, did you guys get to hear that? There was that. There was an ad playing. So, tell me if I just need to repeat myself here. Did you get to hear the ending? It was a good ending. All right, well, um, okay, thanks. No ad, oh, good good deal. Okay, well, uh, do we wanna try another uh, another round of the Horrors of the Haunted Museum or try another book? This one claims to have over 20 endings. I mean, a natural enough one would be to choose a different room, maybe choose the mummy room. <laughs> I mean, if you're brave enough. Anybody want to try a second go around or should we pick another book? We got Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. We got Ghost Hunter. We got The Castle of No Return. Help the pirate. Oh, yeah. Well, there's that too. Because we tried to fight him and it was, it was bogus. I'm kind of thinking we should go back to the, the choice between the pirate or the mummy. Yeah, I mean, Jacer, it's it's like there's one one approach is I want to see like every possible option. The other one is I just want to give you guys a selection of the book and then some other time we can pick it up and try it again. OK, um, let's go back to the mummy choice. So there's no time for discussion. We got to get out of here. Good thinking, Mike whispers. Footsteps are in the same room as you. You're good, you're, you take off running. There's two rooms ahead of you. Pirate room, Egyptian mummy room. 
go to the mummy room. Okay, so let's see where that leads us. Twist a plot. The two of you turn and run as fast as you can into the mummy room. The room is dark. Two night lights against the far wall give off a faint orange glow. Speaking of faint orange glows, I wonder if I turn these lights off, what it'll look like. Ooh, spooky glow. It's not going to glow for very long. It looks so much cooler in, in person. It's like bones. Okay, anyway, um, two night lights against the far wall give off a faint orange glow. Did the slow footsteps go the other way? Scrape. Scrape. No! Some, someone, something still pursues you. You hear the scraping of a heavy foot dragging across the marble floor. Then a footstep. And the dragging foot again. Scrape. Step. Scrape. Step. You try to say something to Mike. You're so scared that your mouth opens but no sound comes out. In the darkness you can see that he is as frightened as you are. Scrape. Step. Scrape. Step. The footsteps stop. Silence. All you can hear now is the pounding of your heart. Ticking of your watch. Scrape. Step. Scrape. They start again. Closer. So close you feel as if you could reach out and grab whatever it is walking towards you in the dark. Cold room. The mummy! He finally managed to whisper to Mike. It must be the mummy! It sounds like a mummy. You mean, Mike says, the rumors are true? All this whispering is hurting my voice. Scrape. Step. Quick, into the pyramid, you whisper, pulling at Mike's sleeve. Whatever it is, won't look for us in there. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? You both look at the giant reconstructed pyramid across the room from you. No, Mike cries. We'll be trapped in there. Who knows Who knows what's in there? They moved it stone by stone from Egypt. Who knows what's out there, you cry. Scrape. Step. Scrape. You better decide fast. Should you run into the pyramid to hide, or should you stay and face whoever is approaching? Decision time. Option one. Choose the pyramid. Option two. Choose not to move from your hiding place. I have my own idea about this, but I'm not going to say anything. So, make your choice. Vote for option one, move into the pyramid. Option two, stay in hiding. Okay, Bohemius and Jacer voted for option one. If I, if I turn all the lights off, it'll be completely dark. I do have a little headlamp so I can actually see the book. So it's very... Okay, looks like everybody's voting for option one. Okay, go into the pyramid. Yeah, it is a lot spookier with all the lights off. Scrape. Step. Scrape. Step. Scrape. Step. Footsteps approach slow but steady. One foot stepping with a loud click on the marble floor, and the other foot dragging slowly forward with a dry scraping sound. I'm not hanging around to find out what this is. Mike whispers to you. You turn and run into the open pyramid. You don't even look back to see if Mike is following you, but the sounds of running feet and hard breathing tell you that he is right behind you. It's dark in the pyramid, but the long, narrow corridor you find yourself running through is straight. You're running to escape whatever it is pursuing you, and you don't think about what lies ahead in the replica of an ancient Egyptian burial tomb. 
Wait. Stop a minute. You cry to Mike, your voice echoing again and again through the cavernous structure. You both stop and listen. Are you being followed? No. No footsteps. We've lost him, you cry happily. Mike struggles to catch his breath. Great, he says, his voice still a whisper. But now, where are we? The corridor makes a right turn and then a left turn. There has to be an exit around here somewhere, you say. If only we could see where... And then you burst out laughing. You realize you've both forgotten about something. Our flashlights, you say, reaching into your pack. We forgot. We brought flashlights. I don't believe it. With your flashlights on, you can see where you're going. You can see the gray rotting walls. See the damp cracks in the crumbling stone floor. See the spider webs hanging down from the ceiling. The one thing you cannot see is a way out. Mike? You say your voice shaking. I, th I think we're really lost. Can you find your way out of this ancient pyramid? Let's find out. The narrow corridors lead to wider rooms. The rooms lead to narrow, curving corridors. The rooms are all empty except for the spiders that have made the pyramid their home, filling every corner with thick webs. Have we been in this room before? Mike asks. I can't tell, you admit. They all look alike. How long have we been walking? It seems like hours and hours, Mike says, his voice a lot higher than usual. Hours and hours! I don't I don't think it's been that long, you say, struggling to control your voice. We've got to stay calm, Mike. We can't panic. There's got to be a way out of this creepy place. The museum wouldn't put up a pyramid without at least a couple of exits, right? Mike doesn't answer. I know, you say, struggling to sound cheerful. We'll just turn around and go back the way we came in. Which way is that? Mike asks gloomily. He's right. You don't remember which way you came in. You made so many twists and turns in these dark halls, you've lost all sense of direction. It's this way, I'm pretty sure, you say, even though you're not pretty sure. Maybe we should just wait here for someone to find us, Mike suggests. But Mike, no one knows we're here, remember? You say, come on, we've, we've got to at least look on the bright side. I mean, we lost the mummy that was chasing us. Maybe, Mike mutters. You walk a little farther, your flashlights moving quickly up and down. Over the gray cracked wall, suddenly you enter a large chamber. At the far end of it, you can make out two doors. One door leads into a brightly lit chamber. A sign hangs over the doorways. Someone has translated the hieroglyphics. It reads, Cursed be those who dare to enter the chamber of treasures. The other door seems to lead into more darkness. I'm not going into a room with the curse on it, Mike says. I don't care how bright and cheerful it is in there. But the other room is as dark and gloomy as all the others we've been through, you argue. Maybe this room is bright because it leads out of the pyramid. Which doorway do you choose to go through? Option one, choose the doorway the doorway with the curse on it. Option two, choose the door the other doorway. decision time <laughs> I mean is it really a curse is it really not a curse who wrote it I mean there's so many so many variables here all right so we've got votes for the non-cursed door and the cursed door so two for non-cursed one for cursed anybody else but in the live chat want to vote? Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't show the votes on the screen, so you just have to rely on the fact that I'm telling you. The uh, little chat thing doesn't, doesn't record it. Okay, so I guess we're going with the non-cursed door so far. We got Wardicon, Bohemius, and Jacer. Okay, let's try the non-cursed door. See, you never know, like, are they telling you the truth or are they using reverse psychology on you? Oh, 
I don't care how bright it is in there, Mike says. The room has a curse on it. I can read, and I think we're in enough trouble without adding any ancient curses. You have to agree that he's right this time. Okay, okay, you say reluctantly. Let's try the dark doorway. But I know it's only going to lead to another dark room. Come on, Mike says. Don't you get discouraged. That's my job. You both laugh at his little joke. <laughs> you step through the unmarked doorway. You find yourself in an immense dark room. Shining your flashlights all around, you see that the room is filled with large, long cases. Mummy cases. Okay, you were right, Mike cries. The bright room. Let's go and find the bright room. I'll take the curse. I'll take anything. Let's just get out of here. They're only empty cases, you tell him, hoping that you're right. Nothing to worry about. Look, there's another doorway up ahead. We'll just keep walking and you stop, wa you stop talking because you hear something. What is that figure that is climbing out of the mummy case? No, it can't be. Can it? You shine your flashlights onto the approaching figure. Yes, it's a mummy. It's a mummy walking with its arms outstretched toward you. I gotta show you this picture. Just imagine being a kid and seeing that. Like, oh crap. <laughs> All right, turn the page, keep alert. What do you think he wants? Mike asks, so terrified he can barely talk. You're just as terrified as Mike. I, I don't know. I don't care what he wants. You manage to say. You bend down and pick up two bricks right off the floor. This is discourage him from coming any closer. You're gonna fight him? Mike says. Cries. Let's just get out of here. Look how slow he is, you say, trying to give yourself confidence. He's old, right? We can take him, Mike. You raise the bricks and prepare to throw them as the mummy staggers closer, closer, closer. You must choose quickly, run or fight. So option one is uh, run from the approaching mummy. Option two, stay and fight him off. Bricks. Last time Mike was right. So option one, run to fight. All right, so option one, we're gonna try to uh, run from the mummy. Option two, try to stay and fight. All right, we got three votes for running. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's, he's slow. Okay, I think there are only three of us left. Is that why we're... Oh, Aconite Shadow Moss is in here. Maybe he's not close enough to actually get the keyboard, though. Bohemius, Jacer, Ribby, Wardicon. Throw the bricks and run. See, Jacer's thinking like I would. I'd be like, chuck it and then go. Chris, what if there's more than one mummy? I mean, think about that. It's like the one you didn't see. Clever girl. Um, okay. All right, I guess we're running. Yeah, see, we need some option threes. We haven't gotten any of those yet. As the mummy comes near, it seems to get taller. You soon begin to realize that this mummy is over eight feet tall. An aroma of ancient decay fills your nostrils. You stagger back from the smell. You drop the bricks. You realize that trying to fight this monstrosity from the past would be futile. A high-pitched whistle pours out of the gaping hole that forms the mummy's mouth. The smell of decay is overpowering now. You feel as if you cannot breathe. The ancient being lopes forward, stumbling and staggering, and always moving slowly, steadily towards you and Mike. The decayed cloth falls from its body as it walks, leaving a gray trail of bandages on the dusty floor. <laughs> Cries mournful, tired, filled with the evil of centuries. Quick, Mike, you say, grabbing your friend. You realize that the two of you have been standing there as if hypnotized, staring as the mummy approaches. Out the door over there, run! But Mike stands there with his eyes wide and his 
Mouth slightly open. He appears to be in a trance. Mike! Mike! You scream as loudly as you can. Mike! Mike! He doesn't seem to hear you. You pull at him. Come on, Mike, run! You can't pull him away. He's in the grip of the mummy's spell. The mummy is close enough to grab you. Do you try to pull Mike away, knowing that you probably aren't strong enough to escape while dragging him with you? Or do you leave Mike? Run out as fast as you can and hope you can find help in the museum? So option one, choose to try to drag Mike away with you. Option two, run. All right, decision time once again. And <laughs> recruit the pirate. See if we know if we had that knowledge. You're like, all right. Option one, drag Mike. Option two, run. Pirates, throw the bricks and run. See, Jacer's thinking outside the box. Jacer would either be the one that would get us out of this alive, or he'd be the one who would have too many options, and we would die while we're thinking of the options. One of the one of the other. But you got to think of it as like you're a kid in the '80s trying to do this. I don't know what age you're supposed to be. I'm guessing like teenagers, like early teens, probably. All right, so we've got three votes for option one. All right, we're we're gonna try to help Mike. Good old Mike. Throw him over your shoulder. Fireman's carry. Get him, get him out of there. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's big and you're scrawny. I mean, it could be either one. Okay. Page. Turn the page. Okay. You grab Mike by both shoulders and pull. He seems to be rooted to the floor. You're using all your strength, but you can't budge him. Mike! Mike! You scream right in his, his ear. But he doesn't give any sign at all of hearing you. The whistle sounds like laughter now. <laughs> Something like that. The mummy is only two feet away. Its arms are close enough to reach you. The smell. The smell is overwhelming. You feel faint. You realize you must forget about Mike. You, must, you just have to try to save yourself. Quick. Let go of him. Run. Run for your life. You can stop trying to run. It won't do you any good. You realize that now, don't you? Once Mike was under the mummy's spell, you realize it wouldn't be long before you too were captured by it as well. The mummy's magic is pretty powerful, but of course, he's had several thousand years to perfect it. Perhaps you'll have that long to perfect your magic, yes, yes. The mummifying process was a bit painful, wasn't it? You don't exactly feel like yourself anymore. You both don't look like yourselves anymore either. It's lucky that you look so good in gray gauze. Here's a thought to cheer you up. Sometime soon, some other kids are going to get a crazy idea to spend a night in the museum. And somehow, they'll certainly find themselves wandering through the chambers of the ancient pyramid. And when that happens, you'll be ready for them. Won't you? The end. <laughs> Slap him. <laughs> Can't leave him behind. Yeah, I'd be mean, just like, you know, no, try something else. <laughs> Throw him over your shoulder. <laughs> Kick him in the gut. <laughs> Turn around, grab his head between your over your shoulder and, you know, give him the stunner. <laughs> the stone cold stunner. That'll that'll knock him out of it. And then do the same thing to the mummy. -na 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 -na. <laughs> Hopefully someone will toss you some beers. That's why you have to have three friends with you. Okay, well, so you became a mummy. So we got a good ending and we got a bad ending. Well, what do you think? Should we choose another book or should we try another adventure in the horrors of the Haunted Museum? I mean, I'm still highly nostalgic for uh, Midnight at Monster Mansion, but this one's pretty good too. It's got some funny, it's got some comedy in it. Some hijinks. <laughs> should, we, should we choose another book? Let me move right along. All right, so we got three books to choose from. We got uh, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings by R.G. Austin. 
We've got Ghost Hunter by Edward Packard. And we've got the Castle Nell Return also by R.G. Austin. So we'll just vote on books here. Let the GM decide. Ah. I mean, we've got time to do each of them in turn. All right, guys, you can vote. Unless you're all too tired. Cheers, dead gamer. <laughs> well, that's two votes for let the GM decide. Okay, guys. I like it. Ah, we got a vote for uh, option three. Castle no return. Well, <laughs> GM decide. Take a stance, people. Zargon knows all. Support. D3. Well, see, I could. I could do that. Or I could just, instead of rolling to die, just, just decide what I want to do. I mean, the Castle of No Return, I don't think we've really done much with that one before. So, that would be a fresh choice. And this is definitely not one that I remember back in the day. Now watch, you can rewind the tape and you can see that we actually did read it last time. I just don't remember if we got to it or not. All right, this is Which Way Books number one. All right, we'll do Castle No Return. You are a master of your own fate. Illustrated by Mike Eagle, Archway Paperback, Pocket Books. Remember Pocket Books, 1982. All right. Attention, which way books must be read in a special way. Do not read the pages in order. If you do, the story will make no sense at all. Instead, follow the directions at the bottom of each page until you come to an ending. Only then should you return to the beginning and start over again, making different choices this time. There are many possibilities for exciting adventures. Some of the endings are good, some of the endings are bad. If you meet a terrible fate, you can reverse it in the next story by making new choices. Remember, follow the directions carefully and have fun. All right, we begin. One night, as you're watching your favorite television program, the picture begins to wiggle and a loud buzz fills the room. You try to adjust the set, but nothing works. In fact, the picture gets worse and the buzz gets louder. Angry and frustrated, you turn off the TV. You talk to your friends and discover that every television set in town has been disrupted. Next morning, you hear strange electronic sounds. You discover that they're coming from the woods behind your house. And you decide to investigate them. You put your Swiss Army knife in your pocket, set out in the direction of the noise. Sounds like something I would do back then. You've been hiking for hours when the sky suddenly turns black and you're caught in a fierce storm. The storm is short, but you're wet and shivering. When you come to a part of the woods that you've never seen before, in front of you is a castle, a real castle, with a moat and turrets and high walls. To the side of you is a rickety old shack. Oh, yes, we did read this, because that sounds familiar. Okay, I guess I'd just forgotten. Wow. That time again. Okay, to the side of you is a rickety old shack. So, decision time already. Option one, choose to swim the moat in order to reach the castle. Option two, explore the shack. Wow. Okay, so there's the illustration, courtesy of Simon and Schuster. GM's opinion doesn't matter. That's right. GM is an unreliable narrator. So option one, swim the moat. Option one, explore the shack. Alright, Jacer's bold. He goes for the shack. Wow, just went quiet. Yeah. 
is it coming back? Oh, it's like maybe it's the power trying to come back on. <laughs> Old Radio Shack, yeah! Man, I was thinking about all those stores that we used to have back in the day, like Suncoast Movie Company and uh, Tower Records and uh, Electronics Boutique and B. Dalton Books and KB Toys and Radio Shack, Blockbuster Video. It's like you walk into a mall now and I don't recognize any of the stores. The wall. All right, so we have one vote for option two. That was Jacer. Anybody else? give you a little bit of time here if anybody wants to vote. I think people are slowly falling asleep here. That's okay. It's a dark and stormy night. Option two. Ah, Bohemius. So far the shack is unanimous. I'm definitely going to have to get some better black lights next time. I've got my... Uh, my crystal skull uh, goblet here, pirate thing, but you can barely see it in the light. Whereas uh, the previous year, it was like perfectly illuminated in the purple. So. I guess I could show that for a while. <laughs> He's got a little hat. All right, so option two, it looks like option two it is. So we're gonna check out the shack. Explore the shack. You walk towards the shack. There's no light inside, but you hope that the door is unlocked so that you can go in and warm yourself. By now you're shivering, shivering so violently that your whole body is shaking. You can barely control yourself enough to knock on the door. Just as you raise your hand, you hear the ferocious growl of a dog. Okay, decision time again. Option one, decide to knock on the door and enter the shack. Option two, decide that you do not want to go in. So option one, go in. Option two, don't go in. All right, voting time. Ah, you guys want to go in. Of course. Fortune favors the bold. Or at least, <laughs> at least it'll be more interesting. All right. Okay, so we're going to knock on the door and enter the shack. You knock. A light goes on. The door opens slowly. Hello, says a man. My name is Boris. Please come in from the cold glance at the huge mastiff that is chained to the wall. Don't worry about killer, says Boris. He will not do anything without my command. All right, you say in a shaky voice as you enter the shack. You look hungry, Boris says. Would you like a bowl of soup? Option one, eat Boris's soup. Option two, don't eat the soup. <laughs> This is a little simpler. This is which way books. This is a little simpler uh, choices than the other ones. I feel like maybe this is for younger kids. So vote. We're gonna eat the soup. It would be impolite, right? You gotta, you gotta take the guy's hospitality, or he'll get really angry and like stab you with a ice pick or something, <laughs> right? The soup is hot and tasty you finish it quickly. I was surprised, you say, to see a castle here in the woods. Nobody in town knows it's here. It has always been a secret, Boris explains. We're involved in scientific research and 
We don't want to be disturbed. What kind of research, you ask? Oh, powers of the mind, mostly, answers Boris. ESP, hypnosis, psychokinesis, that sort of thing. Psycho what, you ask? Not understanding the word. Psychokinesis, he repeats. The science of moving objects with the power of the mind. Watch. Boris picks up a spoon and places it on the palm of your hand. And he stares at the spoon. With an intense, powerful glare, you feel the spoon getting warm. Then it suddenly begins to twist. When Boris is finished, the spoon looks like a pretzel. I carry on my experiments in the control room, says Boris. Would you like to see it? Decision time again. Option one, go to the control room with Boris. Option two, don't go to the control room. All right, vote now if you'd like. It's like rapid fire. Okay, so we got to vote for the control room. Thanks, Bohemius. Anybody else? Another vote for the control room. Okay. Looks like we're going. This is long before Stranger Things. <laughs> Boris looks at you and snaps his fingers. Let's be off, he says as he raises a trap door in the floor. This way, please. And follow him into a tunnel. As you walk, you hear the noise of animals scurrying along the path in front of you. When you emerge from the tunnel, you realize that you're inside the castle. You follow Boris into a room that is filled with flashing lights. You're very frightened and think that you should run from here as quickly as possible. That would not be wise, Boris says, reading your mind. Option one, decide to make a run for it. Option two, stay and find out what happens next. Wow. <laughs> Matrix that spoon. So option one, run! Option two, stay and observe. Yeah, that kind of looks kind of visually interesting. All right, we've got two votes for option two. Brave. Let's see how deep this rabbit hole goes. You're like, hey, it's I'm in a book. I can do it anything I want, right? Be bold. It's like you realize you're dreaming. You can just do anything. Okay. Stay and find out what happens next. That was a wise decision, says Boris. He points to a chair in the middle of the room. Please sit down. You sit in the chair. The flashing lights make your skin turn strange colors. Slowly, slowly, you feel yourself drifting away. The lights swirl around you. Soon you have the sensation that you're no longer yourself. Boris has incorporated you into his mind. Okay. It is an hour later. You're still in the room with Boris. You belong to him now. But you don't care. This is where I belong, you think. A smile creeping over your face. This is what I should be doing. It is pleasant and warm in the castle with Boris. He is a nice man after all. I think I will like it here. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Get the superpowers first. Oh man. So, I guess, yeah, you just were woven right into his trap. But what, what could you do? Of course, maybe his powers were just twisting spoons. I mean, maybe he couldn't, like, twist you into a pretzel. <laughs> Who's to say? Well, what do you think, guys? Should we give it another go or jump to the next book? I don't know. The Castle of No Return, I mean, it's it's quirky. It's different. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's my favorite yet. Of course, there's a lot more book than what we just covered. We just kind of 
gotten barely into it. Of course, this is the very first book, so you know they're probably refining their technique. So some other books in the series, um, Sugarcane Island. That sounds really familiar. I want to say that one I read a lot trying to beat it, and I never could. I kept dying. Curse of the Sunken Treasure, Cosmic Encounters, Creatures of the Dark. That sounds like a winner. I'll have to look for some more of these. But I think so far, I mean, I really, I mean, everybody knows Choose Your Own Adventure, but Twist a Plot, I have a soft spot for it, and I, I like the writing. Okay, well, what do you guys think? Should we try Castle No Return again? Or pick one of the other books? We got Ghost Hunter, and we got Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. You always got to look at the picture. That's how you judge a book by its cover when you're a kid. <laughs> I mean, you can read the back, too. Was Boris the villain? But he cooked us soup. Yeah, and it was good soup, too. Or did we just think it was because of his hypnotic wild? I don't know. Yeah, and what, what, what was he going to use this for? I mean, we're in his power, but now what? <laughs> we don't know. We just believe whatever he says. Go to the castle this time. All right, guys, you want to try it again? Let's try it again. Okay, so we're going to warp back in time. And we're, gonna, we're probably going to, like, drown in the moat or something terrible. But who knows, right? Because I notice in these books, like, sometimes you can you can gain knowledge by taking the wrong path and go back and use it in the right path, and it's true. Other times they trick you, and it's not true. Like, the knowledge you gain is useless. Like, it's the opposite. Like, you know, it would never work. So, like, either way, you're screwed. You know, unless you choose the exact right sequence of events. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go back the beginning choose to swim the moat in order to reach the castle all right i'm gonna wait for the ad break to end just so that uh in case anybody who's not a subscriber will be able to hear the beginning of the adventure go to the castle this time we got nine hours to kill <laughs> to kill bohemia seems like such a nice man he has my best interest at heart. He made me soup. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy obeying his instructions. <laughs> like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> He's using hypnosis. No. Got to resist. Okay. We're going to try the castle. Just as you're about to dive into the moat, a drawbridge is lowered in front of you. Okay. <laughs> It's cranking and creaking sounds are eerie. And there's a loud thud as the bridge hits the ground. You cross to the other side and enter the courtyard through a door in the wall. As you step into the courtyard, the bridge lifts. Your exit has been closed. You look around to discover a bright beam of light. You're about to investigate the light when you hear a piercing scream. Oh, nine hours before the unboxing. Ah, yes. Oh, you're uh, you're one of the lucky ones getting. Uh... Oh no, you're gonna watch the unboxing. I get it. Okay. So 8 a.m. my time would be the unboxing of against the ogre horde. We're assuming. I mean, unless Joe Mon Manganella walks into the room, and goes, oh, you know what? Ah, crypt of perpetual darkness. Let's release that too, and then. Ta -da! Luca. Yeah, it's it's a new hero quest thing. And they've given us no clues so far. They've pretty much shut out shot down everything about Crypt of Perpetual Darkness. And Joe Manganella being there may just be a coincidence. He does D D stuff. He'd have plenty of reasons to be there besides, oh, he's gonna jump in and say he's back on the Hero Quest. So that would be a nice surprise. At the same time, I'm hoping it's the ogres. But the good thing is, if it's not the ogres, it's still going to happen sometime in 2024. It has to, because they announced it. Well, they announced it. They, they put it on the, the list they sent to those stores. And I'm sure that it wasn't fake. It was real. So the question is just when. And the fact that we already have websites that have 
uh, pre-orders for March 31st or January or quarter one or just 2024 um, shows that it's going to be announced. And so, well, if you think uh, six months to the release of Wandering Monk is when we heard about that one, so six months to the release of this one, I mean, it works out just about right. I don't know how many other shows, like big trade shows, there are other opportunities this year for them to show stuff. But I mean, we're already in November. So, yeah, I'm gonna, my money is going to be on Ogre Horde. But yeah, nine hours to kill. <laughs> we're not going to go that long, but we'll, we'll, we will do some more reading. Okay, back to the story. Castle No Return. Okay, so you hear the scream. Option one, find out who screamed. So if you want to help the person who screamed. Option two, decide to investigate the beam of light. Go towards the light. So option one, investigate the scream. Option two, investigate the light. All right, make your choice. Yeah, see, I'll, I'll be asleep, so I'll just find out from you guys what what actually happened yeah it was funny i went into the stream i did the stupidest like most noob mistake ever i tried to post a link to our discord it was just like instantly timed out it's like dang it <laughs> i should have known like all these I, of course I've, I've been in other streams too where i'm like can i post a link and they're like sure and i do it and then i get banned and it's like what <laughs> so i got to message the guy and say hey you said i could and, oh, oh sorry auto auto mod it's like oh, dang it See, like, we, we allow people to post links. Like, I mean, yeah, if somebody posts, like, a scam, you know, or something, or they just keep throwing the same thing in, or if it's, like, you know, something uh, <laughs> adult entertainment oriented or something like that, I mean, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll clean those up. But, I mean, if it's something, like, on topic, who cares? You know, you want to promote yourself? It's not like you can't have two tabs open at the same time. But... I suppose if our stream ever gets that big, I mean, we're going to have to probably do something like that just because there'll be so many people. We just can't possibly control it all, even if we have lots of moderators. All right. But anyway, yeah, I'll look forward. I mean, I'll, I'll see the video on demand, whatever it is. I think it'll be good. I mean, six months from now. Okay. So we got a vote for one and a vote for two. Oh, man. I'll have to be the tiebreaker. So Bohemius wanted us to investigate the scream. Vorticon wants us to investigate the light. Vorticon says my Hasbro Pulse pre-order money was just collected for Spirit Queen's Torment and Pro Props Tour Teller. Aha! Okay. So Vorticon, uh, just out of curiosity, what's the shipping? Is it one week or is it like two to three business days? What are they saying? I mean, when I did the Guardian Knights thing, I think they cashed they charged my credit card like three different times. But I mean, each time it was like they refunded it right away. They're like out of stock. And then they charge again. I'm like, oh, and then it's like refunded out of stock. And it's like, OK. And I think it took like four or five months. And then I finally got it. But I mean, after that, I'm just like, I'm not going to pre-order the stuff anymore. That's silly. I guess I don't have the kind of like discipline to pre-order something and then completely forget about it, which negates the purpose of having a pre-order. Like something you anticipate you want and you're like, oh, okay, I can't forget to get it. It's like I'm refreshing it every day. Is it coming? Is it coming? Because with uh, the Guardian Knight, they made it sound like, like it's coming out in a few weeks. Like, and of course, no, it was like five months almost. I will look, hold on. Sure. Okay, Wardicon. Well, um... I'm going to make a decision because I don't really remember the scream or the beam of light. I mean, the, the, the knowledge that we shouldn't have is that, okay, there's psychic exper experiments going on here. There's some kind of technology that's probably involving the light, but the scream would seem more natural. Like, oh, of course, investigate the scream. Somebody's in trouble. We're heroes. We're going to help them out. So I'm going to go with option one. That'd be my tiebreaker vote. So sorry, Wardicon. $40.89 total for each game with shipping. Okay. Yeah, depending on where you are in the world, that would vary. 
Yeah, so right now you can only order it from Hasbro Pulse. But if you're getting it next year, it's more than GameStop. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That's right. I'm forgetting already. So the other day, Amazon.com, Amazon US, has them both listed, but it just says they're out of stock. And we're working hard to get them back in stock. So let me just take a quick look. I'm not going to throw it up on the screen. <laughs> throw up on the screen. I'm going to just take a look at my, because I added them to my cart just to see. temporarily out of stock so it doesn't say pre-order anymore so that is a change and I think that was that was like earlier today so I didn't even notice it somebody else saw it before me pointed it out so they're $33.99 each on Amazon not not a sponsorship here I'm just pointing out a fact this is free prime delivery Temporarily out of stock. Oh, so more than GameStop, but earlier, but early. Okay, well, let's uh, let's investigate the scream. Oh, my voice is getting a little dry here. Okay. You've, you've had to make a difficult decision. Well, you're, you want to try and help the person who screamed. You listen. Once more, a scream echoes off the walls, but you cannot figure out where it is coming from. Suddenly, there's only silence surrounding you. You don't know where to go. So, decision time again. Decide to enter the castle, or decide to explore outside the castle. Sounds like we're back to the beginning, almost. Okay, so... Option one, explore castle. Option two, explore outside. All right, make your decision. Vote. Option one, explore the castle. Option two, explore outside. barely see the alien queen there. Still got to cut out the pieces and glue them together. Yeah, I was hoping that they'd be push fit like the, uh, the fire team, but these uh, aliens board game Xenomorph pieces. They're all they all have to be glued together. And they're really spindly pieces. But I was thinking, well I could use hot glue and so it's like temporary. Can't see it very well. Uh so Wordicon says no shipping info yet. Through my PayPal a few minutes ago still says approximate shipping date of 15th of November. Well that's the release date. Vorticon says option one, Bohemius option one. Okay. So explore the castle. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the info, also. All right. You approach the huge castle door. It is made of massive planks of wood with iron hinges. You're surprised at how easily it opens. You step out into an enormous entry hall. You call out. Hello, hello, hello. Is anybody there? There, there. The voice echoes back to you from all directions. Choices again. Option one, go up the stairs that are directly in front of you. Option two, stay to see what is behind the door to your right. So option one, up the stairs. Option two, door to your right. Yeah, there were a lot of computer games like this, too. Adventure games. So 
So that's one vote for option one. Up the stairs, says Bohemius. And then we got our glow-in-the-dark pieces here. Necrons. Androids. Or clones. All right, two votes, I follow the wizard. All right, option one, so we're going up the stairs. You walk slowly up the long, wide flight of stairs. Just as you reach the top, you hear a scream. It is coming from the room straight ahead of you. Your heart races, you're terrified. Suddenly, you hear pounding on the inside of the door on your right. Ah, now we got three options. Option one, go to the room where you heard the scream. Option two, run away down the hall. <laughs> Option three, open the door on your right. Okay. Option one. So option one, go toward the scream. Option two, run. Option three, door on the So he doesn't say what kind of scream. Is it like a scream of a person in trouble? I mean, I guess that's what I was thinking, but what if it's like a, you know, like a banshee scream, a monster, you know, something. And maybe the pounding is the monster, or the pounding is the person trying to get away. <laughs> Could be anything, right? So we get an option one and an option three. And then I'll pick option two, and we'll be just stuck in limbo. Uh, whew, I don't know, guys. Where's Jacer when we need him? <sighs> to cast the deciding vote. Or I could just do a random, because I, I don't know. I don't know which one it is. Scream. Or the pounding. I mean, I guess if I had to pick, I'd probably think the scream. <laughs> Wordicon changed his vote. Uh, he's following the wizard. Changed my mind. All right. Okay, so you guys are both going... Alright, let's 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 go for it then. Go towards the scream. You, sh you guys sure? Last chance. Alright. You feel you have no choice except to help the person who is screaming. You rush through the door. There in the middle of the room is a boy trapped in a net. Using your pocket knife, haha, -ha, you begin to cut him free. Don't release me, he pleads. If they find that I've escaped, there's no telling what they will do. Please go away. Oh, interesting. All right, there's the terror-stricken young lad. <clears throat> uh, so option one, go away. Option two, help him anyway. Right. Decision time. So do you follow his advice and go away? <laughs> or do you help him anyway? Maybe he's hypnotized. <laughs> of course we don't know that. I mean we wouldn't know that in this situation. Help him anyway. <laughs> what the hell? Why you scream then? <laughs> yeah, exactly know what he wants. Okay, so Wardicon votes for help him anyway. Alright, what do you think? Uh, Bohemius, are you going to go with that? Option one. <laughs> it's like, screw this guy and his weird weirdness, his indecisiveness. It's like, I'm screaming, I didn't think anybody was actually going to show up. It's like, whoa. All right, so we don't know. Yes, I've had enough. 
Oh man, I gotta cast the deciding vote, don't I? Yeah, that's a weird one. That's a hard one. I mean, maybe maybe he was under some compulsion to scream. Or maybe he was in on it. Like, he was, you know, just getting you close enough so that whoever else could, like, come get you. But then why would he say go away? Like, he wants you to leave the room? What kind of weird experiment is this? Tough. I don't know. I'm inclined to just, just help him anyway. It's like, okay, maybe he just doesn't know what's good for him. I mean, is somebody, like, behind me about to, like, hit me over the head with something? <laughs> if not, I'm just going to help you and get you out of here. I mean, once I've cut the rope, you can do what you want. You want to run? You want to stay here? I've done all I can for you. Okay, so I'm going to say let's help him anyway. I don't know how this is. So, after you set the boy free, he tells you that the only way out is through a secret tunnel. But to get here, he says, you must pass the lab. If we're caught by the scientists, we could be in real danger. You tell the boy to go first, <laughs> and if he makes it, to get out as fast as he can. He watches as he creeps safely past the lab and into the tunnel through a trap door. You're pleased that he will be safe. As you creep past the lab, you look inside. Okay, decision time again. If you continue past the lab and into the tunnel, that's option one. If you're so curious about the lab that you must find out what's going on in there, option two. Okay, so this is curiosity. Killed the cat, I guess. So option one, walk past the lab. Option two, investigate the lab. Uh, it's always the curiosity thing. But you could stop another madman. You could stop another uh, human experiment. Which is the more hero heroic. We are not cats. Okay, all right, so the choices are option two and option two. Investigate the lab. If you're gonna catch us anyway, might as well figure it out, figure out what it is. Okay, so we got uh, the, the boy to safety. We gotta go past the lab, but we're gonna stop and investigate. Figure out what's going on. All right, so curious about the lab, you're gonna Figure out what's going on in there. And you're not cats, so you can't be killed by curiosity. You enter the lab and are greeted by a man and a woman dressed in white coats. Welcome, the man says. You look like you are a weary traveler. And I am weary and lost and hungry, you reply. Don't worry about a thing, he says. We can take care of all your needs. What kind of lab is this anyway, you ask? Oh, mostly we do experiments and bioregeneration. What is bioregeneration, you ask? Oh, don't worry about that now. Uh, you're hungry, you're tired. Would you like to rest here? Would you like to go to the throne room and have something to eat before you sleep? Says the woman. What? <laughs> okay, uh, so option one, go to the throne room. For option two, rest in the lab. That seems really weird. <laughs> okay, so option one, go into the throne room. Option two, take a nap in the lab. Yeah, first I thought maybe I misread it and it's like, oh, check out the rest of the lab. No, it's like rest in the lab. Like, are they going to put me to sleep? Is that what that means? I don't know what this is. By any chance, you prepare soup. <laughs> are we going to become soup? What's going to happen? Okay, Wardicon says option one, Bohemia says option one. Okay, we're going to the throne room. Is that a euphemism for something? All right. Throne room it is. 
The scientists take you to the most elegant room you've ever seen. The chandelier is made of sparkling crystal. The walls are paneled with gold. There are velvet couches and deep, soft chairs, and people resting and eating. You nod to them politely. Once you've finished your meal, you realize that a change has taken place in you. You're no longer curious about what is happening here. The food has taken away your curiosity. Oh, maybe there was some soup involved. A man and a woman come over to you. Something has happened to my mind, you say. Ah, yes, the man says with a smile. It has happened to all of us in the throne room. We are content. The food is wonderful. The chairs and pillows are the softest in the world. We all plan to stay here forever. After all, why would we want to leave? <laughs> we leave only when we are called, says the woman happily. Called, you ask? Ah, yes, says the man. Each day, one of us is called and taken away. Those who go never return. You realize then to your horror that you and everyone else in the room have been drugged by something that has taken away not only your curiosity, but also your will. You know that you will never escape. But you don't even care. The end. <laughs> Weird lady will eat us. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, oh, there's lots more. There's lots more to this book. But so far, these, yeah, these psychic experiments, whatever, whatever's going on, they're about mind control. We keep getting sucked in by eating stuff. <laughs> One soup, ha ha. Two soups, ha ha. Three soups, ha ha. <laughs> yep. Oh man. Well, we're getting close to the end of our time together. I kind of feel like we should try another book. What do you guys think? We got two more. If you're still awake. Vampire Spies and Alien Beings or Ghost Hunter? I mean, when we're not doing the rant cast, I mean, it's kind of rare that... Um, you know, we've got time to do something else, but should we just, uh, should we pick one? Let me do another half hour. Vampires and aliens. <laughs> so Wardicon wants us to do this one. With a cover like that, how can you go wrong, right? We already we already tried our luck somewhat with vampires already, and I think we're going back in. Or did we? Alucard? Hmm. Kind of makes you kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Special purchase, ninety nine cents, and I assure you, I did not buy this for ninety nine cents. If only. Okay, illustrated by Anthony Kramer, written by R. G. Austin. Which way books? Number two. This is 1982. Congratulations. You've won the Grin Toothpaste Sweepstakes. Your prize is an all-expense paid trip to a Hollywood studio lot. You're greeted at the gate by a guide who explains that three different movies are being filmed on the lot at three different locations. As you walk toward the place where the space movie is being shot, a deafening roar fills the air. The sky turns black, and then an unearthly glow hovers all around you. Oh no! It happened! cries the guide. What happened? you ask as the eerie noise begins to subside. If that's what I think it is, we're in serious trouble. The special effects team has been working for months to create realism on the set of the movie, space movie. They build a special machine that turns fantasy into reality. The explosion means that they've lost control, that the time alternator has been pushed beyond the fail-safe level. What will happen to us? You ask, afraid to hear the answer. All I know is that we're doomed to live in new times and new places. The movies aren't movies anymore. They're really happening. 
We've exploded into a reality warp, and you and I are caught in the middle of it! The guide begins to run, and you follow him. The sky is now flashing with colors. The world turns purple, then green, then orange. As you run onto the set of the space movie, you feel your body grow light. As if gravity has disappeared, you're no longer bound by Earth's laws. Stop! Someone shouts to you. It was too late. You crash into an invisible barrier and fall. When you look up from the ground, you see three alien beings walking toward you. They motion for you to come with them. <laughs> Zargon has been released! Let's see, do we have any alien music? Eh, we'll go with it. Okay, we've got three options now. Uh, go with the aliens. That's the first one. Instead of going with the aliens, you walk across the lot to the set of Nighttime Terror. It's option two. Prefer to visit the set of the spy movie, 0003. Option three. Okay, so we got time to vote now. Oh no, triple O three, not double O three. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we got votes for aliens. Hey, it, it's kind of like the mummy one. It's like, no, no, not the mummy, pirates, pirates. <laughs> All right, so we're going with uh, going with the aliens. All right. As you follow the aliens towards their glowing spaceship, you understand what the tour guide was saying. You're trapped in a reality warp. The actors have, indeed, become real aliens. Asen, my friend, says one of the aliens in a computer-like voice. We must escape before the Gorks arrive. Who are the Gorks, you ask as you arrive at the spaceship? We have no time to explain, another alien shouts. He stands in an orange triangle that is glowing on the ground, and he is suddenly sucked up into the spaceship. Stand on the orange triangle if you wish to come with us, calls a voice from inside the ship. Okay, here's your choices. Option one, stand on the orange triangle. Option two, risk staying behind. Option one, stand in the orange triangle. Option two, stay behind. So Bohemia says, <laughs> uh, stand in the orange triangle. In case you're wondering what these guys look like, this is the artist's rendition. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> oh, Wardicon. Okay, I guess we're staying on the orange triangle. Hopefully it's not a disintegrator beam. Okay, trembling, you step onto the orange triangle. The lights from the spaceship bathe you in a warm blue glow. Before you have time to change your mind, you find yourself sitting on the floor of the spaceship, surrounded by ten curious aliens. Okay, option one, option two. So option one, speak first. Option two, if you're too afraid to speak. Option one, speak. Option two, don't speak because you're scared. This must be uh, where J.J. Abrams got uh, Force Awakens. It's like, who speaks first, you or me? It's like, you already spoke. All right, we're going to speak. Hopefully we don't uh, say something that causes an inter intergalactic incident. What's happening? You ask. I don't understand anything. We are Moosers from a 
peaceful planet many galaxies away, says the smallest alien. We sought to explore your Earth without creating panic. Making this movie was our idea. We passed the thought on to your filming people. Now it is time for us to do our experiments. Will you help us? They ask. And one of them adds, If you do not want to help, we will take you for a journey in space. Option one, if you're afraid that you might be harmed by their experiments, would prefer traveling in space. That's option one. Option two, choose to help the aliens. <laughs> Give us Sarah Connor. Uh, or no, I, I reversed it. Okay. Well, I, I know which one you guys are going to pick, so... I mean, yeah. So we'll say option one is experiment on me, option two, let's go on a trip. I'm a friend of Sarah Connor. What's his dog's name? Wolfie's fine, honey. Ah. Mordecon says, let's go on a trip. Wamey says, experiment on me. Well, maybe we'll save their civilization, you know? Or maybe they're just freaks and they're going <laughs> to kill you. You don't know their intentions. I mean, they, they claim to tell you something, but maybe they're capable of lying, just like humans. Ah! Okay. I'm going to have to make a choice, aren't I? I don't know about this one. I, I feel like I know too much about this story, so I should I should recuse myself. Um, I can just roll a die to see what the tiebreaker will be. One or two. Binary choice. Two. It was two. Okay, so we're gonna say go on a trip. You're afraid you might be harmed by the experiments. You prefer traveling in space. Alright. Do not be afraid, says one of the aliens. We shall not harm you. Remain still while we lift off. The aliens seem kind. But you're not so certain now that you want to go with them into space. Option one, leave the spaceship, explaining to the aliens that you have another appointment. Option two, decide to trust the aliens enough to go with them. This is one of those, are you sure? Are you really sure? Are you really, 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 really sure? <laughs> it's a big decision. Okay. So I'll say option one, leave aliens. Option two, trust aliens. I'm not really going to give you five minutes to decide, but let's see. Emia says option two. Oh man, <laughs> Orticon doesn't trust the alien. Tough one. See, they don't give you a lot of information. It's just kind of like, flip a coin, kid. Which one are you going to get? Oh, flip a coin again. What are you going to get? <laughs> oh, man. Option two. Okay. Brave. Okay. Trust the aliens enough to go with them. Within seconds, the ship has transported you to the edge of your galaxy. You look through the giant portals and are awed by the amazing beauty of the Earth disappearing before your eyes. The black sky is dotted with billions of glowing stars. You watch in silence till finally you cannot contain your curiosity any longer. Who are you? Where do you come from? You ask. We are Moosiers from the Begon Galaxy, one of the aliens explains. Ours is a peaceful planet, and we are interested 
in research. He then asks you to tell him about Earth. You explain about rivers, and rainbows, and fish in the seas. You're truly enjoying yourself when you look out the portal and see a bright disk moving on a collision course towards your ship. An alarm siren wails and the Moosiers run frantically to their stations. That is our enemy, explains the leader. We do not intend to involve you in this. It is our battle, not yours. We must make a decision immediately. Both choices are dangerous. Through astral projection, we can try to place you back on the movie lot where the suspense movie is being filmed. Or you can stay with us while we wage combat with our enemy. Decision time again. Option one, choose to return to the movie lot. Option two, stay on the ship. So option one, have him send us back. Option two, stay on the ship. All right, you guys are getting good. Get out of here while the getting's good, huh? All right, so we're going to see what happens. Back to the movie lot. You think anything would be better than being caught in a space movie that has become real. You do not understand yet that every movie in the lot has become real. As you approach the set of the suspense film, you see a classroom filled with children just your age. So this looks like elementary school. There's a teacher sitting at a desk in the front of the room. The shades are drawn and no sunlight enters the room. The teacher, a man named Mr. Draco, looks at you angrily. What are you doing away from your desk? He asks. Sit down there. Points to an empty seat. All right, those for those of you just joining us and HeroQuest fans, we're reading some game books. We got Vampire Spies and Alien Beings by R.G. Austin from the 80s. And we just walked onto this movie set after the aliens got us out of danger and sent us back to another movie that apparently has become real. And all of a sudden we're in this classroom and there's this mean teacher telling us to sit down. Mr. Draco. As soon as you're seated, the kid behind you taps you on the shoulder. He whispers, That's Charlie C. He sat there until yesterday, but he was murdered last night. Chill runs down your spine. If that news spooks you and you want to change seats, option one. If you're afraid to move because the teacher might get angry at you, option two. I thought they were from a peaceful planet. <laughs> they have enemies though. Option one. Change seats. Option two. Stay put. I mean, it's always a question, like, if the movies become real, are you like the hero, so you're going to survive? Or is it one of those things where you could do something that the hero wouldn't do and the story would play out? And so, Like, do you have character shields? You know what I'm saying? Or are you just going to get killed? And if you die in the movie, do you die for real? Okay, so Bohemius is saying option one, change seats. Don't sit in the murdered kid's seat. But I mean, you know, what does it have to do with sitting there? You know, is that what caused him to be murdered? <laughs> it's a little creepy. So Bohemia says, change seats. Vorticon, what do you think? Option two. Ah, we got another binary choice. Split. Split decision. All right, well... So I'm going to have to roll to, I mean, I could just make a decision, but I like to... We let the fate decide. 
bad. <laughs> bad attempt at Watto impression. Okay, two. Stay put. Siege Perilous. Alright, you're afraid to move because the teacher might be angry at you. And you're a kid in a classroom. You're, you are relieved when school is over. Just as you're about to walk out the door, the teacher, Mr. Draco, says, Please stay after class. I like to have conferences with new students. You wait nervously until those children leave. And you begin to talk to Mr. Draco. Halfway through the conversation, a fetid, foul stench invades the room. Uh... <laughs> Okay, option one if you want to get out of there and stay away from the stench no matter what the consequences. Or option two if you think it's better to finish your conference with Mr. Draco in spite of the smell. Just don't want to sit close to the creepy guy. See, it's kind of like, I don't know, you're, you're talking to somebody and they, they have a little accident and you're like... You don't want to say anything like, whoops, you just let one fly there. If you uh, can't control it. It's like, it's kind of rude, but, uh, you know, you're my superior in this social situation, so I guess I'm going to stay and just tough it out. No. Okay. Get away from the smell. Dude, can't be ripping one when I'm trying to have a conference. That's a dirty trick. It's a creepy guy. Okay. So you're saying get away from the smell. Pretty clear, clear cut. You dash out of the classroom, not knowing where you're going. You only understand that anything is better than being trapped with a crazy teacher. You run across, or a stinky one too. You run across the movie lot, finally entering a set that looks as if it's from a space story. Uh oh. In a time loop. You're standing alone, trying to decide what to do next when you feel something growing around you. You flail your arms and kick your feet, but it's too late. You're trapped inside a transparent bubble. The bubble begins to roll, and you tumble head over heels toward a gigantic donut-shaped spaceship. You curl up in a ball just as you're about to crash. There's an illustration. But instead of crashing, you pass right through the wall and find yourself sprawled on the floor of the spaceship. The bubble is gone. You're surrounded by a circle of silver-skinned creatures. They are gorks. And every one of them is pointing a dangerous-looking object in your direction. Okay. It's always more fun to use your imagination, but I'm going to show you anyway. What, what the author, illustrator, thought they should look like. So option one, if you're so stunned that you find it impossible to speak... Option two, you decide that the wisest course would be to greet the creatures calmly. So once again, first contact with the Gorks. And option one, speak first. Option two, hold your peace. The only thing about this thumbnail is I hope people aren't going to see this and think it's a painting stream and they're going to be like very confused. So I'll probably have to get a thumbnail of like one of these books. Be like, game book reading. Option one, option two. Oh, again, another split decision. These are the Gorks. Well, and you'll recall our knowledge from the previous one is the Peaceful Planet guys were saying that the Gorks were their enemies. Of course. We don't know if that means the Gorks are bad. I mean, maybe they have just some other legitimate grievance. Who's to say? We have seen too much to be silent at this point. <laughs> That's what Wardicon is saying. Yeah. Well, Bohemius, what do you think? Is he right? Or uh, you're going to stand by your decision? Who knows, right? Split decision. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to roll the dice and see who's going to be the tiebreaker. Ah, you prevailed. Bohemius has changed his vote. Okay, okay. Wouldn't that be neat if it had to be a unanimous decision? Okay. 
All right. Greet the creatures calmly. You stand up and offer your hand in greeting to the closest creature. Do not move, says the voice in your head. Although you do not understand how, you know that these creatures are communicating with you through thought transmission. Do not move, the voice repeats. We are here to conquer Earth, and you are going to help us. Wow, that's chilling. You know that you must not allow such a hideous act to take place. You pretend that you don't do not hear their instructions, avoiding any sudden movements that might provo provoke the Gorks. You walk slowly towards the controls that you've spotted on the other side of the room. Just as the creatures lunge at you, you reach out and pull the first lever that you can touch. There's a sudden jerk and you feel the ship lifting off from the ground. The voice in your head speaks angrily. Because you pulled that lever, we are forced to depart from your planet. It will be years before we can return. You're proud that you had the courage to save the planet Earth and its people. And you hope that someday you'll find a way to save yourself. The end. Ah, well, we had our encounters with aliens, that's for sure. We saved the Earth. So I guess the Gorks were the bad guys after all. All right. Well, <clears throat> I think we have just enough time if we want to get into Ghost Hunter. What do you guys think? Or do we want to try another crack at vampire spies and alien beings? Goonies forever. Goonies never say die. <laughs> well, what do you think? Do we have the courage to try a brand new book? Fans of the uh, Spooptober episode of the Rantcast will remember Ghost Hunter. We had fun with this. Well, we had fun with all of them. But... This is Choose Your Own Adventure number 52. Edward Packard. Is that Hewlett Packard? No. Is that the cannibal guy? Edward Packard? But no. So this is recommended for age 10 and up. Um, let's see. 1986. Bantam Books. Oh, okay. I guess there was another edition that was 85 ghost hunter i know some of these some of these uh choose your adventure books they were reissued like they had ones that were from the 70s they reissued them in the 80s and the 90s okay warning do not read this book straight through from the beginning to end these pages contain many different adventures you can have as you hunt for ghosts from time to time as you read along you'll be asked to make decisions and choices your choices may lead to success or disaster the adventures you have will be the results of the choices you make. After you make a choice, follow the directions to see what happens to you next. Think carefully before you make a move. Ghost hunting is a dangerous business. You have the wits and courage to survive? You're about to find out. Good luck. All right, let's try the last one. Ever since you solved the Harlow Thrombay murder case, your services as a private detective have been much in demand. Harlow Thrombay was one of the richest men in town. And it was a surprise when he called you in to help him find out who was plotting against his life. Fortunately, Thrombay was murdered the very night you began your investigation. His widow, Jane Thrombay, was a prime suspect, but you proved her innocence. And afterwards, she continued to live in her huge Victorian house till the day she died of a heart attack just a few months ago. You've enjoyed being a private detective. But lately, you've been thinking about going into a new field. In fact, you decided to become a ghost hunter. What got you interested was a magazine article on the subject. The author said that in most cases, a haunted house was once the scene of a murder. This fact tied in with some news you heard recently. After Jane Thrombay died a few months ago, a man named Howard Grimstone bought the Thrombay place. Neighbors say that strange things have been going on there. Lights on, late at night. Guard dogs patrolling the grounds. Weird sounds coming from the house. The more you think about it, the more likely it seems that the ghost of Harlow Thrombay has come to haunt the house where Thrombay was murdered. The 
another thing in the article caught your eye. The article said that Professor Zybeck, who is supposed to be one of the world's leading authorities on ghosts, works at the Institute for Occult Studies, only a few miles from where you live. The author did not seem to have a high opinion of Dr. Zybeck, however. In fact, he said this. Although Dr. Zweibeck has interviewed hundreds of people who claim to have seen ghosts, he admits he has never seen a ghost himself. How can he be so sure then that ghosts really exist? Doesn't he know that people have a way of seeing what they want to see? Or what they are afraid of seeing? Dr. Zweibeck's evidence for the existence of ghosts seems no more convincing than all the so-called evidence for UFOs and ESP. That's how you imagine him speaking. You ask various people if they know anything about Dr. Zweibeck. Neighbor viewers, uh, Mrs. Waleka, tells you that she's known Dr. Zweibeck for many years. I don't know whether his theories about ghosts are true or not, but I do know this, she says. He is an honest man. You wonder whether it would be useful to see Dr. Zweibeck or not. So, decision time. Option one, decided to pay a call on Professor Zweibeck. Option two, decide to start ghost hunting without delay. So option one, call the doctor. Option two, start ghost hunting. Vorticon says, I have five D&D Endless Quest books. Ah, I have one of them. I have to check. I can't remember which one I have. Uh, four Choose Your Adventure, one Which Way book, and one Time Machine. Yeah, I love Time Machine. The publishers of Choose Your Own Adventure, always love them. That's since I was a kid. Yep. Well, that's the thing. If you remember it that well, I mean, you might lead us to victory. <laughs> So Wardicon says, Zybeck it is. All right. Uh, Bohemius also voted for one. Okay. Easy, easy choice then. Easy money. Within the hour, you knock on the door of Professor Zybeck's. Oh, Professor. I called him Doctor. Yeah. Doctor Professor. Anyway. Uh, Dr. Zybeck's office at the Institute. A moment later, you're greeted by a tall, slim man wearing a tweed vest and a polka dot bow tie. He ushers you into a tiny office, which is made even smaller by huge stacks of books piled up against the walls. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. The professor taps the ashes out of his pipe and stuffs in some tobacco. But evidently, deciding you might not want to sit in a room full of smoke, he lays the pipe down on his already cluttered desk. What can I do for you? I'm sorry. I have to go to a meeting, and I only have a few minutes. Well, you say, <clears throat> clearing your throat, <clears throat> I, I, I read you've done a lot of research on ghosts. I thought maybe you could give me a few tips. Tips? Professor frowns. Well, it's a very complicated subject, not one that boils down to a few tips, as you say. Now, that being said, I will tell you this. Number one. Ghosts exist. Shocking. But they normally don't exist in a way in which we are aware of their existence. So most of the time it doesn't matter whether they exist or not. I don't quite follow, you start to say. But the professor interrupts you with an unpraised, an upraised finger. I'm not surprised you can't follow. It's very complicated, as I say. But what I say next, you can follow. Number two, ghosts don't hurt people. You're more likely to be hurt if you run from a ghost than if you go toward it. The professor takes a gold watch out of his pocket and looks at it. Oops, I'm very late. As he gets to his feet and grabs his jacket from the coat stand, he waves his pipe at you. Goodbye. I wish you luck. Good day. Before you can even thank the professor, he's out the door. You glance around the cluttered little office a moment, and then head home thinking about what he said.
Yes, yes. You're sitting at your desk thinking about how you might begin your work as a ghost hunter when the phone rings. It's your old friend, Jenny Mudge. It's quite a coincidence. Jenny, who is also a private detective, helped you solve the Harlow Thrombe murder case. How are things, you ask? Jenny replies in her usually usual lively voice. Very fine. I've stopped being a private detective and decided to become a ghost hunter. That's amazing, you say. Great minds think alike. I was just about to see if I can find out whether Harlow Thrombe's ghost has returned to haunt his old house. Could be, Jenny replies. But I've learned of a house that by all reports is definitely haunted. It's just a little way out of town. The Grey Mansion, it's been empty for a long time. The place is so haunted, weird, cursed, whatever you want to call it, that no one will go near it. I called you to see if you'd like to go out there with me this Saturday. I mean, go out this Saturday. Okay, option one, decide to find <laughs> to join Jenny. Option two, decide to hunt for Harlow Thrombe's ghost instead. All right, two options. All right, so option one, go out with Jenny. <laughs> I'll go with Jenny. Option two, hunt the ghost yourself. Join Jenny or hunt for Harlow Thrombe's ghost instead. Decision time. All right, we got an option one option. It sounds like Edith Bunker. I don't know. I mean, it's like the voices, they just kind of come to me. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, what do I feel like doing right now? <laughs> okay, so we got another split decision. So I think we're just going to do another random tiebreaker. Okay, random tiebreaker. Go with Jenny or hunt a ghost of Harlow Thrombe yourself. Okay, so two. I guess we're uh, leaving Edith Bunker behind. You decide, first of all, to pay a call on Harlow, or Harlow. <laughs> you found him already. No, you decide to, first of all, pay a call on Howard Grimstone the new owner of the Thrombe house. You're sitting at your desk thinking about what to ask him when a woman appears at your front door. I'm Sylvia Rustin, Jane Thrombe's niece, she says. May I come in? Of course. You take a close look at your visitor as you usher her into the room. She is a rather plump, round-faced woman in her 40s, you'd guess. Her skin is so fair, you imagine she must sunburn very easily. Her yellowish hair is curly. She looks as if she is a basically happy nature, but right now she seems tense and anxious. You had heard that Jane Thrombe had left most of her money to Sylvia, and you're curious to know what brought her to see you. Sit down. What seems to be the problem? You motion her towards the old couch next to your desk. I'm penniless, and I should be rich. You search Sylvia's eyes for a clue to her character. What do you mean? I heard you inherited most of your Aunt Jane's wealth everything except the house Sylvia leans towards you Aunt Jane provided in her will that the house and furniture be sold and proceeds given to charity all her money and jewels were to be left to me but before she died she put her money into diamonds she even told me how many there were 37 one of them was the famous cartoon star one of the largest diamonds in the world she hid them in a red leather box, and I'm the only one who knows. The house has been sold, but I'm sure the diamonds are still in it. In fact, I think I know exactly where they are. Aunt Jane once showed me her secret hiding place behind a wood panel in the right rear corner of the cedar closet in the attic. What do you know about Howard Grimstone, the new owner? 
Not much, Sylvia replies with a shrug. But there are a lot of rumors about him. I've heard he's a big drug dealer. There's also a rumor that he's in the arms smuggling business and that he makes bombs for terrorists. Not the kind of man you could ask for help. <laughs> to help to look for diamonds, I guess. But now you can see this is going to be a tricky case and it will delay your new career as a ghost hunter. Besides, you're not really sure you can help. <laughs> Option one, tell Sylvia you don't think you can help her. Option two, tell her you'll think about it. Wow, okay. <laughs> Alright, decision time. Option one, don't think I can help you, ma'am. Option two, I'll think about it. <laughs> Already Bohemius is choosing uh, option two. Think about it. If I wasn't so tired, I'd say let's do Midnight at Monster Mansion one more time after this. But it's uh, after midnight. Okay. Um. All right. So we got a vote for two and a vote for one. Oh, man. Split decision again. Fifty percent chance. You guys are gonna have to get your own copy of the book and find out what really happened on that fateful night. Ah, option one. That was the random draw. Tiebreaker. Okay, so I don't think I can help you. Let's put the greed aside. Never mind. You're telling me there's a chance. Well, I mean, do you guys not want... Do you want to change your vote? I mean, with a lot of these books, I, I feel like they, uh, they're they testing your courage. They want to say, like, do you want to have the adventure or not have the adventure? <laughs> but maybe it's, you know, a dead end. Okay, so Bohemius is changing his vote to one. Okay, so you both think it should be one. So I don't think I can help you. you're saying. I'm sorry. I just don't think I can help, you say. Well, thanks for your time. I, I guess there isn't anything to be done. After Sylvia leaves, you go for a walk to think things over. By the time you get home, you've decided that you really should try to help Sylvia. It's not right that she should be deprived of her rightful inheritance. The next morning you call her. There's no answer. Every day you try again, but it's it's a week before you're able to reach her. Oh, it's you, she says. I should have let you know I was visiting my mother. I got back yesterday and found out that Grimstone has left town. The place is all locked up. What do you think he cleared out? The police have been watching the place. He may have figured... They had gotten enough evidence against him to close in on him. Maybe so, you reply. It also may mean that he found the diamonds. Thought suddenly occurs to you. Could you get a court order to have the place searched? I already tried, Sylvia replies. The judge denied my request. He said that there wasn't enough evidence to justify his issuing a search warrant. Well, maybe I can think of something. Sitting at your desk with your feet propped up in your best thinking position, you wonder what to do next. Somehow, you've got to get inside the house. That afternoon, you walk halfway across town to the section where most of the rich people live and stand across the street from the great white house where Harlow Thrombe was murdered. The grounds are surrounded by a wrought iron fence that's too high to climb except at the front gate. You glance at the man sitting in an old car parked in front of the house. You've been in the detective business long enough to know a plainclothes policeman when you see one. Maybe you should get Jenny to help. She could distract the policeman while you find a way to climb over the fence. On the other hand, you don't like the idea of sneaking into a place that's guarded by the police. Maybe you should join Jenny investigating the Gray Mansion. Ah, so we got another chance at Jenny. Okay. Option one, call Jenny and ask for her help. Option two, call Jenny and offer to help her. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're either going to do your own mission 
are hers. Alright, so vote now. If you're still awake, option one, get Jenny to help you. Option two, help Jenny on her case. Alright, Wordicon says option two. Ah, Bohemius agrees. Okay. So we're going to help Jenny in her case. So we're switching cases. Cops are involved. Staying out of this. Okay. Call Jenny, offer to help her. When you arrive at Jenny's house on Saturday, she greets you excitedly. The gray mansion is still empty, she says. And what are you waiting for? You reply. Nothing, now that I've found my flashlight, Jenny answers. There's a light drizzle falling, and the sky is an oppressive, leaden look. When you reach the top of a hill, and look up at the huge Tudor house. Its turrets lean, and its porches sag from decades of neglect. The massive front door is bolted shut, but halfway around the house, you find an unlocked door that leads to a butler's pantry. You've hardly reached the somber, musty hallway when you hear a wailing, moaning sound that rises and falls in pitch over and over. This way, Jenny says, her voice a little shaky. You follow her into a large room with massive oak tables and chests, and chairs covered with dark brown leather. Your eyes fix on the great stone fireplace. The wailing sound is lower, is louder now, and it's coming straight from the fireplace. Scary fireplaces, this sounds familiar. Any of us, any of you have uh, stayed in our sessions with uh, Hero Quest novels, uh, you'll remember this. Okay, maybe it's only the wind, you say. Jenny clutches your arm tightly. The wind never sounds like that. Then I guess it's a ghost. Jenny places her mouth close to your ear. If we're going to trap it, we have to surround it. One of us must go up on the roof and shine the flashlight down the chimney while the other watches the fireplace. How can we get up on the roof? I noticed an upstairs porch on the left side of the house. Jenny answers. It wouldn't be hard to swing onto the roof from there. Do you want to try it or should I? Okay, option one. If you say you'll go up on the roof. Option two, decide to stay by the chimney. <laughs> All right, decision time. Option one, you go up on the roof. Option two, make Jenny go up on the roof while you wait by the chimney. Bohemius says, go up on the roof. Wardicon says, stay by the chimney. It's tough, isn't it? I mean, you can't assume that you're a boy reading this book. I mean, what if you're a girl? <laughs> It's not like, oh, the chivalrous thing to do would be to go. And it's like, no, the feminist thing would be ladies first. <laughs> like, it's like, it could be anything. I want to kind of want to kill Jenny. <laughs> she, she's been a thorn in your side this whole time. She's just, she's just trying to get all the glory. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm inventing this fake backstory. Like, I don't remember the other book. I, I, I barely read it. Uh, it was like... Who killed Harlow Thrombe? Um, I, I should probably track that one down so I can. I think there's a trilogy. I think there's a third book that follows up on this one. Yeah, get the complete story. Find out was was Jenny like a 
a rival or was she like a true friend or what was she? <laughs> Stab him in the back. Okay. Uh, oh, so Ordecon changed his vote. So we're going to go up on the roof. All right. If you're sure about this, go up on the roof yourself. Okay. Leaving Jenny to watch the fireplace, you climb the broad central staircase. In the second floor hall, you find a door leading to an upstairs porch. You're able to pivot around the corner post of the porch, railing out onto the roof. Though you have a good tread on your sneakers, the roof is not steeply pitched, the slate shingles are wet and slippery. You have to work your way up with great care. You're beginning to feel more afraid of falling than coming face to face with the ghost. About halfway up the chimney, you pass the attic window. Looking into it, you see a face. A pale gray face with a twisted shadow of a mouth and great hollow eyes. Instinctively, you rear back only a few inches, but enough to lose your balance. Desperately, you drop to your hands and knees to try and get traction on the roof, but it's too late. You're falling, tumbling, head over heels, over the edge. Your neck twists as your head hits the hard ground. Ouch. You're dead. Dead as far as any human would say. But you aren't dead from your from your standpoint because you can feel yourself floating, drifting into a house, passing like television waves through walls and doors and floors, your image invisible, floating, not always silent, but like a sometimes moaning, sometimes rattling, howling wind that whips through trees, rattles windows and Send shaft of air past flickering candles. Your presence hovers through time. Then it moves and is felt. Live people, solid people, walk, run, and stumble. One gasps, another screams. Terror in their eyes, their chests tight, panting, gripped by fear. The ghost that haunts them is you. The end. There's the kicker illustration. Let's go scare Jenny. Yes, let's get her. <laughs> ah, a ghost. <laughs> well, guys, I've had a enjoyable time. And I got to say, not every Halloween. I mean, it's one of my favorite holidays. Christmas and Halloween are my personal favorites. And this year I got to don a costume trail a couple kids uh, uh, my niece and uh, her neighborhood friends and uh, a couple of the other adults were there and went door to door they got lots of candy it was cold but our costumes kept us warm we had our glow sticks you know it was, it was fun it's a lot of fun and we've been eating candy the last few days ingesting a lot of calories maybe I'll have another glass of that uh, pumpkin spice eggnog before I head to bed and hopefully <laughs> don't dream about aliens or uh, scaring Jenny but yeah it was uh, it was fun thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me tonight good fun uh, and tomorrow our plan is um, barring any unforeseen circumstances we're gonna be playing hero quest mage of the mirror um, now we might have to cut the game short just because I did promise to do some work to help somebody out uh, later in the evening but we probably can have you know our usual at least two hours if not maybe a little bit more tomorrow on HeroQuest fans and Twitch uh, 2 to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time and surely we'll have the news by then so maybe we'll do a little bit acknowledge what news we have we found out if it's the Ogre Horde or something else I think it's the Ogre Horde and then on Saturday, the plan would be, um, yeah, just to do in the evening, six, excuse me, six to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, Rise of the Dread Moon. I do have some other things I want to get done, so hopefully the stream won't be late. I'll try to keep everybody up to date on that. I mean, you know, you know us. We try to start on time, but 
you know, if we get delayed a few minutes, we get delayed a few minutes. That's just how it goes. Eight hours left. Oh, man. Well, get some rest. Uh, find out. Then you had a great time. See you tomorrow for sure. Give us more ogres. Yeah. Give me spice. <laughs> I want you to squeeze and squeeze. <laughs> the spice must flow. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, shout out to uh, the authors of these great books. I enjoy Ghost Hunter every time trying to do the accents that I just came up with. And well, I mean, Strange Bus, to, to his credit, also did the Sean Connery. Uh, last time and then vampire spies and alien beings has a lot of good ideas in it but i'm kind of like i wish there was more detail to it it's definitely for like younger audience uh castle no return i'm still i want to know more about this one get more of the story horrors of the haunted museum is just fun and midnight at monster mansion is kind of like just heavy nostalgia goggles for that one but out of these i mean Cheers Your Own Adventure is the OG. They've been at it the longest, probably. But uh, Twist of Plot, I think, gives them a run for their money so far. But as far as the other ones, I mean, I've read some of the Star Wars ones. Those are Cheers Your Own Adventures. But I feel like they're kind of hampered a little bit by the, the franchise that they're in. And maybe some of those other franchise stories are similar. I mean, there's like Star Trek. There's Indiana Jones. I mean, they either make you the star of the story and they have to follow canon, or they make you like an ancillary character and you get to be kind of part of the adventure. So, I don't know. They're all fun. And the Hero Quest ones are great because it's more like a like an RPG adventure. Yep. So, uh, we're just playing ourselves out with a little ad here. We'll enjoy some Carl Casey, White Bat Audio, and I wish you all a great night. Happy Halloween, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, whatever you celebrate, Day of the Dead. Everybody stay safe, have a good life, and we'll catch you next time.